broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay. Council is called into session, and actually, we don't have... Okay, you know what? Um, one minute. We need... Uh... Oh, I guess you're right. Um, let me... Okay, she's here. Council is called in session in 30 seconds. Hey, Councilwoman, how are you? I didn't know you had invocation. Invocation. I do. Take your time. This is my birthday and I'm late. Sorry. I was going to announce that. <laughs> Good morning. Is Comfer here? Hi, Comfer. Stand up, baby. You know another Jefferson Dragon is doing invocation, right? That doesn't surprise you. Thank you. <laughs> Comfort Anyao is a West African immigrant from Austria who made, who has made Tampa, the Tampa Bay area her home. She attended Lockhart Elementary. She went to Progress Village Middle School. And she graduated from, of course, in the top 10 of her class from Thomas Jefferson High School. As a United Negro College Fund STEM scholar, she has recently finished her Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering at University of South Florida with a magnum cum laude accreditation. Today, Comfort is working as a software developer for ConnectWise and focuses her free time on making STEM initiatives more accessible to marginalized groups in the Tampa Bay area, specifically young black girls. And she's also the slam poetry champion of Thomas Jefferson High School. Welcome, Comfort. Thank you so much, everybody. If you could please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. These are for the Pledge of Allegiance, my apologies. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so first of all, good morning, and may I ask that everyone please close their eyes and bow their heads. So, dear Heavenly Father, we begin by giving you thanks and praise for the grace and mercy you continue to show us day after day. We thank you for taking the time to mold us with your hands and for caring for us indiscriminately. Thank you for being a safe haven and ever so loving. And thank you for creating us in such a way that we may share even just a fraction of your love to the people around us, to our community. We thank you for keeping us and our city intact, storm after storm, hardship after hardship. Lord Jesus, you took on our every sin and died so that we may be clean. You carry our burdens so that we may walk with a lighter load. Even though we are not deserving, even though we fall short of your word, and even though we sin against you and our brethren time and time again, still you do not falter in your favor for us. And so we ask you for forgiveness. Please fill our hearts with you and give us a spirit of service and obedience so that we may abide by your will. Lord, I pray for our city and the people of this council who are chosen to lead it. They find themselves in a position of responsibility and are charged with the well-being of thousands. No one understands that weight more than you do, Lord Jesus. So I ask that you provide these leaders with the quiet strength to perform their duties faithfully and with your love and grace always at the forefront of their mind. Be with them and let your spirit weigh on their hearts so that they would never abuse their authority or neglect their constituents. Be with them so that they may represent this city as one honored and favored by you, one where the homeless can find a bed, where the hungry may eat their fill, where the children are always regarded as the salt of the earth, and where anyone, regardless of who they are, may find solace. Lord Jesus, I pray that you give our council members the wisdom, guidance, and love for righteousness necessary to properly execute your will when doing their work. Let them deliberate and discuss crucial items only through the eyes of your spirit and detach themselves from any egos or self-serving ideals. May every choice they make on behalf of our city be done so with the conviction that you are always watching and may their decisions serve to benefit Tampa's people while always being a reflection of your glory. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Present. Miranda. Here. Maniscalco and Vieira. 
Uh, here. We have a bit Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Okay, a couple of announcements before. Uh, first, happy birthday to Councilwoman Henderson. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Council members Clendenin and Maniscalco will be absent today. Um, and I believe there were memos um, written by them or their offices, and I'd ask that to be uh, for a motion to place that into the record, if I may. Set. We have a motion by Councilman uh, Miranda, second, I believe, by Councilman Carlson. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, and there you go. Okay, now let's go to approval of the agenda and the addendum. Um, I, I had, I'm sorry, what? We need to adopt the minutes. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, motion to adopt the minutes. So For September regular session, September 21st, and workshop and evening sessions on September 28th. Second. Oh. We have a motion by Councilman Miranda, second by Councilwoman Hurtak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now let's get to approval of the agenda and the addendum. Um, I had sent a memo requesting for item number seven to be heard immediately after firefighter of the quarter as this item deals with uh, something that uh, uh, deals directly with uh, Tampa Fire Rescue. Uh, now it's very important for the public. Public comment will be open only for item number seven at that time. Um, then once presentations are done, regular public comments and everything else in the agenda will be open. If council is amenable, may I have a motion to that effect? Okay. Motion by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, and so long as staff are not needed, I would request that the, to move up the following items to the consent docket for approval, uh, 71 and 72. Again, if no one has uh, any um, uh, questions on those. So moved. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman Hurtak, seconded by? Aye. Uh, Councilman Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Now let's review the agenda, please, uh, to see if we have. Oh, and another issue is um, found out that we have a motion for reconsideration of, uh, of a legislative matter, which uh, I, I don't think I've ever had in my years on council. So I will inquire with Mr. Shelby. Mr. Shelby, that is to be heard after public comment, correct? Uh, yes, there was a request if he could do it during public comment uh, or at the uh, at the end of public comment, either way. Um, but normally it's something that council would have to reconsider. Okay. Given given the time that it will take, I'd, be, I'd ask the gentleman who's here for that, uh, so long as there are schedules and minimum for it, to be the last public comment so that we don't, you know, go into a, a rabbit hole, so to speak. We could do the rabbit hole at the end. Um, so uh, that's, that's, I'm amenable to that. Any objections, council? No. Okay, thank you very much. Now let's move through the agenda. Uh, staff reports. And I do believe there will be an administration update for number uh, 68. And let's see here. For number 69, uh, Mr. Drumgo is here for that. Does anyone wish for him to appear live on this one? 69. Um, I don't need anything. Okay. Okay. So memo will suffice to administration for number 69. Uh, number 70, there is a continuance oh, there request. There is a resolution, so we have to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I just mean for the administrator, for anybody to come in person. Um, for number seven, uh, there is a memo. Uh, there is a continuance sought on number 70. Is that so? Oh. Thank you. So moved. Okay. Motion by Councilman Hurtak, seconded by. Second. Uh, Councilman uh, uh, Carlson, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mm, okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Could you just announce that for the purpose of the public for number 70, please? Yes, sir. Uh, number 70 has been continued. Okay. And October 19th. To October 19th, 2023. Thank you very much. Thank um, 71 and 72, I believe, we've just addressed to be heard um, with the consent agenda. So we take. I'm sorry, what, sir? Sorry, 73, um, I'd like to move yes, sir. per staff's request to have this continue to okay. January 25th. We have a motion by Councilman Carlson, uh, seconded by Councilman Miranda, to continue item number 73 to January 25th of 2024, I believe I heard. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you so much. Um, 74, we have, uh, that's myself. Um, the memorandum will do for 74, I believe. Um, 75, we have... Uh, yeah, no, no need for that. The, the rest of them, um, uh, uh, Ms. Zellman will be here too. Yes, sir. So you want her here live for this, sir? Okay, for 74 through 78, Ms. Zellman has been requested to appear. And then we have 79 for Mr. Shelby. We could take, uh, that, up. We could take that up then, too. Yes, sir. Okay, great. May I have a mo? Yes, ma'am.
Okay. So moved, second, 12 through 15. We have a motion uh, to continue 12 to 14 uh, to what date? Oh, to October 19th. And to remove item 24 by Councilman Hurtak. May I have a second? Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Okay, yeas have it. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to adopt the agenda as proposed? Moved. Second. Motion by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Now let's go to our commendations. And first we have Councilwoman Hurtak who will be doing the commendation for ATU Local 1464. Go ahead, Nathan. Um, <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Okay. This is so exciting. Um, normally, Councilman uh, Clendenin does this, uh, but today I get to. So I'm very excited. Do we have all... Our employee, um, Mr. Painter. Mr. Painter right here. Oh, right here. Come on in. You're the you're the star today. Congratulations. So I'm really excited to be here today um, to honor uh, Mr. Painter, and I'm gonna let um, I'm gonna let you go ahead and start off, and I'll read uh, my piece after. Yes, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm new at this. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Council, and good morning, City of Tampa. I'm Steve Simon, President of ATU Local 1464, and I'm happy to be here this morning to introduce you to the ATU Employee of the Month, Mr. Alex Painter. <laughs> Master Fleet Mechanic 3, EVT, Alex Painter is a veteran fleet employee with over 37 years with the city. Alex is a dedicated technician whose skills have been instrumental in supporting and increasing the capabilities of both the Tampa Police Department and Tampa Fire Rescue. Mr. Painter is more than a master fleet technician. Alex is also a highly skilled fabricator. Throughout the years, Alex has been tasked with designing and successfully producing a multitude of projects that had and still have a direct impact on increasing the safety of Tampa's sworn officers and citizens. He has worked in direct support of special requests and or needs from TPD's bomb squad. Today, he helps fulfill the unique needs of Tampa Fire Rescue to keep their apparatus on the streets. Alex can always be counted on to come through in a pinch. His pride, passion, and loyal dedication continue to be key components to the success and constant improvement at TFR's Fire Repair Center. And we thank you, Alex, for all that you do to contribute to keep the city of Tampa running. And I'd like to present you with a letter from the mayor. And if you don't mind, I'd like to read a portion. Go ahead. All right. You have demonstrated a strong commitment and high standards throughout your career of more than 37 years by supporting and increasing the capabilities of both the Tampa Police Department and Tampa Fire Rescue. As a highly skilled fabricator, you have designed and successfully produced various projects that have been direct impact on increasing the safety of Tampa sworn officers and citizens. You are an asset to the city of Tampa, the logistics and asset management department, and to our community. You are admired, well-respected, and set a shining example for others to follow. It is employees like you, Alex, that make me proud to serve as mayor. Thank you for your dedication and service. Mayor Jane. Also, on behalf of ATU Local 1464, I would like to present you with this award. Thank you very much. Wow, I mean, that's an incredible story. The, the, the cool part of uh, being able to do the work and, and then fabricating, that's the really cool part. That's where art and science meet. And I, I am thrilled to hear how well you're able to help um, Fire Rescue especially and TPD to, to get these things to happen. Um, really hoping that we have uh, young folks come in, coming up that you're working with who can help because, you know, 37 years. You can't figure out what you're doing next. But, may, um, but congratulations. We're so happy to have you 
uh, went, um, you know, honored with this award. So today's commendation um, from Tampa City Council presented to ATU Employee of the Month, Alex Painter. Because of your dedication to the city of Tampa and your exemplary work of going above and beyond, you've been chosen for this mark of distinction as the ATU Employee of the Month. Tampa City Council, your peers and superiors would like to commend you for your, for your dedication and service for, to our community. We recognize your commitment to your team, your willingness to step up to keep your community and colleagues safe. We recognize your invaluable contribution to the public safety of our employees and our city. It is the honor of Tampa City Council to present Alex Painter with this commendation on this fifth day of October, 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> now with members of the community. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you, Councilwoman. Adri Colina, Director of Logistics and Asset Management. Um, happy birthday, Councilwoman <coughs> Henderson. I can't tell you what a joy and honor it is to have employees like Alex on my team. Uh, I want to really thank Steve Simon and the ATU and Council and the and administration for recognizing the behind the scenes team because that doesn't always happen. Alex is a dedicated um, employee, a skilled fabricator, and he comes every day to work really caring about the city of Tampa and the job that he does, and that makes such a difference. So I really want to thank you all for recognizing Alex. He's very, very deserving. He's been doing this for a while, and in fact, he told me, I've known Charlie since he had hair. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Alex. You made my job just so much better. So thank you. Good morning, Council. Barbara Tripp, Fire Chief for Tampa Fire Rescue. I mean, I couldn't wait to hear that Alex was going to be here because when they talk about fabricating, this guy has fabricated so much for Tampa Fire Rescue for our trucks. You know, they come, they're standard. All we do is tell him what we need, what we're looking for, and especially with the new radios that we're getting, Alex was able to come up with, a, with some kind of art. And when I saw it, it was just unbelievable. If you ever go by supply um, the shop, you look at his workbench, okay? It is awesome. He made it, he has his radio, he has his tools, everything. And when I say art, this guy is very skillful. So when the city of Tampa, when you retire, you know, I'm going to hire you. you know? <laughs> I mean, this guy, when I say art, he don't, it's, it's not like he read a book or anything. He think about it, he put it together, he process it, and he makes it. And I mean, his skill work is unbelievable. He works for Lamb, but he works for the city of Tampa, and his work has been outstanding. So congratulations, well-deserved, and I have to give you a hug. Thank you. <laughs> And if uh, members of the community are here uh, to uh, give gifts, go ahead. Good morning, Council. Brian Ford with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and happy birthday, Councilwoman Henderson. And thank you, Council, for allowing us to be a part of this celebration. And Mr. Painter, um, yes, unbelievable, 37 years, and as uh, the guy behind the scenes with the Bucks, I can relate to yeah. what a career. So thank you for all that you have done for our community and all the sacrifice. We have a tradition at One Buck, and on behalf of the Glazer family and our entire organization, when somebody goes over and above, they get a game ball. Thank and you. you deserve that game ball after 37 years. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, Council. Mike MacArthur, Steps Towing Service, and kind of follow up Brian Ford here. You're kind of like the offensive lineman that does all the grunt work and yeah. doesn't really get all the credit. So, on behalf of Todd Steps, Steps Towing, you, today's your day. Congratulations. Thank and, you. I mean, what a heck of a career for 37 years. Thank you for all you do for our city. Congratulations. Thank you. Here's a $50 gift card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Jill Witecki from Tampa Theater. 
And I want to thank all of you for giving us the opportunity and taking the time to thank the quiet hard work that goes on behind the scenes that makes our city such an amazing place. So on behalf of the theater, we'd like to present you with an annual membership so you and your family can come see us. Well, thank you very much. Bill Roland from the Strauss Center for the Performing Arts. And I just want to say thank you so much for all that hard work you do. Um, that's obvious you're very well loved and very well appreciated all that work. Uh, the Strauss Center would like to offer you a night of theater, and uh, please come join us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Mary Lou Bailey here on behalf of Zoo Tampa's board. Congratulations. And I'm, and I'm Mark Haney. I'm with Zoo Tampa. And... On behalf of Zoo Tampa, um, our staff and our board, we want to give you a day at the zoo. So you have six passes. Um, come and see us. Uh, we have Preachers of Night coming on right now, so every weekend, and then Christmas in the wild after that. So thank you for your service to Tampa. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we didn't know that. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning. morning, Council. Good morning. Happy birthday, Councilwoman Henderson. Hello. My name is Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonzart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. It's amazing to hear how long you've been serving the city of Tampa and that your family works at the zoo and you're so involved in Tampa. Um, thank you so much for all that you do. We really appreciate it. We want to present you with this gift card to enjoy a meal at any of our restaurants anytime you want. Thank you very much. Please enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a high boy to carry some of this stuff with you. <laughs> Steve McAlini, I'm here on behalf of a couple of different folks who'd like to recognize you. <clears throat> One is the Yummy House China Bistro. They're going to provide you with a gift certificate to so you enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of the Chicho Restaurant Group, we're providing you with another gift certificate. Enjoy yourself over there, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. On behalf of Bella Brava, which is in the Midtown section, enjoy yourself over there. For lunch or dinner, and on behalf of the meat market in Old Hyde Park Village, another gift certificate so you can go and enjoy yourself there. Thank you. So, congratulations. Thank you. Morning, Council. Mike Billick, Secretary of Tampa Firefighters, joined by uh, Treasurer Jeremy Finney. Alex, we'd just like to say congratulations thank and you. sincere thank you from the men and women of Tampa Firefighters, Local 754. It's your dedication that uh, ensures our health and safety with an aging infrastructure of our fleet and an increasing demand for calls for service. It's people like you that help keep us safe, and we just want to say thank you. We have a Visa gift card for you. Uh, we, uh, we ask that you uh, share it with our union brother, a.k.a. your son, <laughs> Gregory Penner. His son also works for us as well. So on behalf of Tampa Firefighters, thank you very much. Thank sir. you. I'd like to add, too, there's two dreaded words in firefighting, or just being a firefighter in general, is change out. Which means when we show up to the shop and something is wrong with the truck that can't be immediately fixed, we've got to change out. And he works diligently to make sure that those frontline trucks stay as frontline trucks and they're on the road every day, every hour. And the worst thing is, is having to go and pick up an older vehicle and move every piece of equipment that you have on your truck to another one, which takes time, takes, keeps the vehicle out of service, and keeps us off the street providing the services to our members in our, in our community. So he works diligently to make sure that, and even for myself, time and time again, to not have to change out, yeah. to get that truck back on the road in tip-top working order. So he's, a, he's a, an excellent craftsman and, and a fine gentleman. So again, thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. <laughs> And, sir, if you'd like to say some words, you may. Well, I don't do this by myself. I work with a great team of people. And here, you can come up so that if, if you want, sir. If you're, go ahead. <clears throat> I said I don't work by myself. I have a great team of coworkers that I work with. We all work together on this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. I'm a... I'm a sci-fi geek, and and so if you if anybody ever watched Star Trek, you know who the most important person on the ship it was Scotty, 
not Captain Kirk, because without Scotty, the ship didn't run and nobody would be saved. And that's what you're doing every day is helping people save lives by getting those trucks back on the road. So thank you for your 37 years. Thank you for your creativity. Um, the fire station near me, one of the trucks, the, the firefighters just celebrated its 23rd anniversary. And so um, it shows that you're a miracle worker keeping those older <laughs> trucks on the, on the road. And we really need them because, we're, because of the supply chain issues we're facing. So thank you. Um, also, since you're so creative in, um, in, uh, in, in um, fabricating, I hope you're on the side an artist. And if you're not, would love to get you connected to the arts community so you can get involved in, in expressing your creativity that way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Painter. You know what? You are obviously a very big deal, and so the next time when I fight for raises, I'm going to actually call your name out. So I just want everyone to know that. Not only are you a big deal, you're an artist, you have skill sets that I can't even imagine. I'm going to have to come see exactly you know, what it looks like over there. Your children have jobs, so you know you are really in good shape. They work for the zoo, the fire, they don't have to borrow money from you. Now you're getting gifts. I mean, you're just amazing, and I just love love hearing your story. Um, this is probably one of the favorite parts of this job. And um, I just want to honor you and say congratulations to you for being honored by so many people that clearly, clearly, clearly appreciate the work that you do for the city of Tampa. And I definitely want to come check it out. Come on down. I certainly will. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's my pleasure to see you again. Uh, I didn't recognize you, not because you have hair, you gain a few pounds. But let me say this. It's what you said earlier that really is the thing that needs the most. Not only was it yourself, it was the individuals around you that made this team work. And without teamwork, this fine local that you work for also says you work for the city through the local. However, I remember the gentleman right next to, you, to your left side saying, we keep the city running. And guess what? He was right. But if it wasn't for individuals like you, the city would be crawling, not running. So I remember way back in the 80s and in the 90s, I wasn't here in the 80s, but in the 90s I was here. And I remember Mayor Greco and I, we kept hearing complaints about police cars not being able to get repaired. And we went out there, we found 68 police cars. In fact, the police at that time were running two in one car because there wasn't enough cars that could carry them. And it was individuals like yourself and others that work in another department possibly that worked together and got together and guess what? All those vehicles were wiped back in the street within 30 days. So that's what keeps the city running. That's what keeps the amount of cost down. If we were to send all these cars to the agency, it's unbelievable. But there's nothing wrong with going to the agency if you have a warrant. But these cars had 150, 200,000 miles on them. And they were still in the street because you individuals said, we're going to make this work for the taxpayers of the city. And it's incumbent upon all of us to understand that if it wasn't for the loyal employees that are around you, with you, and they're your friends, not only your coworkers, you have to have a team that understands each other, no matter if it's even in working or in sports or anything. If you have jealousy, if you have something that somebody's better than you, you have what? Failure, because you're not working as a team. So with your leadership and the leadership of your local that's done a fantastic work for the city of Tampa, God bless you, congratulations to you and your family. And if you ever leave alone, now you can go to your kids and they'll loan you the money. <laughs> God bless you. Thank, Thank you for all you. Thank you, sir, for all your work and your service. And it's very obvious from all the people here are here to speak about you when we hear about your family that you're a very blessed man and that you do great at what you do. So just, uh, you know, all you do is win. So that's awesome. So congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and council, anything else or just? No, no, I think that's great. So congratulations again. Thank I'm you. So honored to have you here today. Thank you, sir. One last round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Very nice shot. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, Council, it is uh, my great pleasure here to do first the um, Officer of the Month. Uh, we have here Officer Greg Landry, who is here uh, to be honored as Officer of the Month. And uh, like I always say, this is a program that City Council does to reflect the values of the community that we serve uh, that strongly supports our first responders. That means our police officers as well as our firefighters. It's very important that we... How are you, sir? Uh, that we uh, that we honor them. So here to speak on this fine gentleman is uh, a gentleman who I believe just uh, marked 100 days on the job formally and is doing a great job uh, in making us all proud. Uh, Chief Burkhoff. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Councilman, and good morning, Council, and happy birthday, uh, Councilman Henderson. So uh, if anybody has ever been or knows a family member that might have been a victim of a DUI crash, you're going to really appreciate what I'm about to tell you with Officer Landry. So he started his career back as a dispatcher prior to becoming a police officer. During his time on the road, his unwavering dedication to crime reduction and public safety has proven invaluable. So we talked a little bit, I'm going to lead into some DUIs and some other things that he's done. He's definitely a well-versed officer worthy of this recommendation and nomination. So, so far this year, He's made over 126 DUI arrests and about 700 traffic stops. But it doesn't stop there. Officer Landry was also recognized as a century achiever by the Florida Organization of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. In addition to his dedication to keeping the roads safe from drunk drivers, Officer Landry also proved vital in the apprehension of several burglary suspects in the matter of a couple weeks. We had a pattern of some commercial burglaries, and in one instance, several pawn shops had been burglarized. So Officer Landry, in between the 126 DUI arrests, recognized this and determined that there's a similar pattern going on, and he started to proactively monitor these businesses. So when he's doing this, he, he locates a suspect fleeing into a neighboring county. The vehicle crashed and two suspects were then taken into custody. So his proactive efforts in that helped solve four related burglaries and a grand theft auto case, but most importantly, preventing future victims. In two other unrelated calls for service, he also did very similar things by playing a vital role in su supporting his fellow officers. Uh, they had perimeters set up and they were looking for suspects out there he took a really good spot on the perimeter and he was able to locate and arrest those suspects that were hiding and uh, to make those arrests for additional burglaries. So Officer Landry's dedication to public service for keeping our roads safe, keeping our businesses safe, reducing victims is definitely worthy of our Officer of the Month. So congratulations. Thank you, Chief. And uh, now we have some uh, members of the community who would like to show their appreciation for the hard work that you do every day, sir. Go ahead. John Miller, Vice President of Florida PBA. I just want to congratulate you on that job well done and present this on behalf of the members. And also our friends at uh, Bush Gardens couldn't be here, so they asked me to convey four free tickets to their park for their appreciation as well. Thanks. So congratulations. Thanks. Well, Laurel along from the Strat Center, we'd like to offer you an evening of theater and enjoy um, a night out on us for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mary Lou Bailey. I'm here on behalf of the Board of Zoo Tampa. Congratulations. I'm Mark Haney with Zoo Tampa. We just wanted to express our appreciation for you and for everybody who works in law enforcement. Thank you for keeping our roads safe and our families safe. You're awesome sauce. We've um, presented you with an annual pass to the zoo so you and your family can enjoy. I suggest you go soon. Creatures of the Night is very awesome, and it's going on now. But anyway, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Chief, Officer Landry. I'm Grayson Bellis. I'm here on behalf of the Bellas Mart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. Thank you so much for your commitment to our city's safety. 126 DOI arrests is a wild amount. We really appreciate everything that you sacrifice and all of your time. Um, we would like to present you with this gift card to dine at any of our restaurants here in Tampa or around the state of Florida. 
Enjoy some paella, some yep. sangria, milkshake. <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Chief. Congratulations. Uh, I'm Jennifer Curry from Bill Curry Ford. And happy birthday, Councilwoman thank Henderson. You. Um, thank you for allowing us to be here. It's a true honor and blessing, and we're so thankful to have you in our community taking care of us. So just congratulations. We're so thankful for you. you. We've included some uh, a free uh, works package for your car, as well as a gift card to Amazon and some other little goodies in here. But we'd love to have you come by and say hello, but we're just so thankful for you. Thank congratulations. You. I've got Jeff Patterson and Leo Gary with me as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Officer Landry, what a story. As a father of two sons, thank you for all your efforts, and uh, thank you, family, for their sacrifice to allow you to do what you do for our community as well. Chief, good morning. And uh, again, on behalf of the Glazier family and our entire organization, I'd like to present you the screen ball for going over and above for our community. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My MacArthur Steps Towing Service, congratulations, officer, on the job well done. Thanks, on behalf of Todd Steph and Steps Towing, we'd like to present you with a, a gift card for dinner and a night out in our company limousine for you and your family, friends. Take the chief. I think he, he'd like to go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, enjoy some time off. You deserve it. Thank you for everything you do for our community. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Ruben Delgado, with, I'm here on behalf of a few companies, Heritage Insurance, Next Level Brands, and Palazzo's Pizza. Good work, man. Good to see you doing good things again. Taking the footsteps of your father, huh? I yes, worked sir. with your dad many years. You're a hell of a cop, so it's good to see you doing good things. So on behalf of the three companies I mentioned, we want to give you some gift certificates to enjoy some restaurants around the city. And I think that from what I hear, the DUI guys know exactly where Palazzo's Pizza is. Uh, we do. Thank you, yeah. sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Good morning again, Council. Jill with Techie Tampa Theater. As somebody who spends a couple of hours a day commuting with my kids in the car, I really appreciate what you do to keep our roads safe. Thank you. Ma'am. So please come see us at Tampa Theater over the next year. Thank you. It's a long line, right? Yeah, sir. <laughs> uh, congratulations. I'm Steve Michelini. I'm here on behalf of uh, Meat Market in uh, Old High Park Village. They're providing you with a gift certificate. Enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of the Yummy House China Bistro, lunch or dinner, enjoy yourself there. On behalf of Bella Brava, which is in the Midtown section, lunch or dinner, enjoy yourself there. And the Chicha Restaurant Group, breakfast, lunch or dinner, enjoy yourself. Congratulations. Thank you. So, on behalf of a grateful uh, Tampa City Council, sir, it is our great pleasure to give this uh, commendation to you. We really appreciate all your work, uh, just everything that you do, but especially with the DUIs. Anybody who's ever been affected by that, I would sure knows just how important it is and the terrible hurt and pain that people cause. So, and, and, the, and the great hope that you give people. So thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And if you want to say anything. I'd like to thank the chief, his staff for this um, opportunity for your old time today, uh, for my family support, and for the community support as well. Thank you all. And now we'll hear from council members, Mr. M council Member Miranda. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Chair. <laughs> Officer Landry, it's a pleasure to see you. It's a pleasure to, to listen to what you have done. 126 DUIs arrest. It's a terrible thing that you have to arrest anybody. But when you see DUIs, you know, we live in a society today that believes in freedom, and that's wonderful. No country in the world is like this one. But along those freedoms comes responsibility. And along with those responsibility, you see, if you're going to have a drink, that's fine. But if you're going to have more than one, two, three, four, and you're going to go out and injure someone else or maim someone else or kill someone else, not only are you taking one life away, you're taking the life of the family members, the spouses, the kids, the grandkids, the aunts, the uncles. So what you've done there, just in those 126 arrests, the probabilities of something that would have happened, you have taken care of. 
And for that, I always say, take care of the little things, and they won't become big things. But if you let them perpetuate and keep going, they think that's a normal thing, that everybody drunk. drunk. And, and that's to me, is what you have done. You have saved countless, maybe hundreds of families from something that would be with them for the rest of their life, and you were just doing your job. But in just doing your job, you have done it at the highest plateau to make sure that what you did was within the law and within the confines of your training, or your police officers, or the basic training you had before you became an officer. And it takes about a year for that to sink in. So on behalf of those families, all of us, and I think really we, we ought to do, instead of taking them to court, take them to see the family, all of them, one at a time and tell the family what they've done. Take them to the hospital to see somebody there that's brain dead so that they understand what they've done. I uh, want to thank you and your family for letting you do what you want to do and being who you are. And God bless you and your family. Muchisima gracias. Thank you. Councilwoman Hurtek. Thank you. Um, and I just want to say again, congratulations to Officer Landry. If, if your family could stand up so that we could honor them, that would be great. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you have a lot of folks here. <laughs> because your family is your backbone um, and allows you to do the things you're doing. And I was especially pleased to hear Chief Bearcaw mention that you started in dispatch. It's something that I have seen as I do ride-alongs that uh, actually when I took the, um, the Citizens Academy that they said that it's so hard to keep people in dispatch because they tend to go on to be officers and I think that's wonderful and I just really wanted to highlight that. It's a great way once you become an officer to know all the calls, you know how things are handled, um, you knew the trauma and drama of DUIs before you even got in that patrol car and put on that badge. So I just wanted to say thank you um, for all the work you do. DUIs are, I mean, I wouldn't say a silent killer, but the one, uh, you know, when you think of, of um, calls the officers go to, that's not that's not one of the first ones you think of, but it's one of the things that can truly, as Mr. Miranda said, impact a family's life forever. So thank you for your work in that, and uh, just want to put a plug out for dispatch, because I know they're always looking to hire new folks who can then become um, our next uh, officer. So thank you so much for your work, and we uh, look forward to seeing you more here. Thank you. Council Member Collison. Repeat what everybody else said. Thank you so much to you and your family for your service. And, uh, and for protecting lives out there. And just to follow on what uh, Councilmember Miranda said, uh, just PSA to the public, uh, this great officer and his colleagues are waiting for you out there. So if you have, my suggestion, if, you, if you're planning on having one drink, uh, take taxi or friend, Uber or Lyft, don't, don't even try it with one drink because uh, they're waiting for you and, and uh, you never know what will happen. And at the very least, we need to save lives by not having people be drunk on the road. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Officer Landry, just backing up what everyone else said, you are absolutely amazing. And I know every single mother, even the dads, definitely appreciate you um, being on the road and protecting our community from DUIs is just an incredible, incredible, incredible um, thing. The Century Achievers Award, congratulations for that, for being acknowledged for that. Um, obviously, you come from a family, a background of law enforcement, so I know everyone <laughs> Uh, is proud of you, so thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Council. Next, we're going to do the Firefighter of the Quarter, and we have Firefighter uh, Sophia Cardenas, who is here with us, um, and we have uh, Chief Tripp, uh, who's going to be coming forth as well, and we'll give him a, everybody a minute to scoot out.
congratulations. Thank you. I mean that. Thank you. Um, again, this is something that we do to reflect the value of the community that we serve and to speak on this um, amazing firefighter and firefighter family. Uh, we have here Chief Tripp. Go ahead, ma'am. Good morning, Council. Barbara Tripp, Fire Chief at Tempo Fire Rescue. And my apologies once again, Councilwoman uh, Henderson. Happy birthday. Um, this morning, we would like to recognize Ms. Sophia, or should I say Firefighter Sophia Cardenas. And let's talk about why she was nominated for Firefighter of the Quarter. So, Sophia Cardenas is actually currently assigned to Station 6 on the A shift. That is one of the specialty stations that have the hazmat. So she's a 14-year veteran with the City of Tampa Fire Rescue and has, um, who has certified her experience and training as a firefighter paramedic with the special assignment that she is currently at. More specifically, she's a value member of the HAZMAT team. She's a mother of two young, um, young boys, of course they're here with us today, and the spouse of another member of Tampa Fire Rescue, Firefighter Roland um, Alfonso. She is well respected by all and has a competent and passionate firefighter who consistently strives to improve herself and all, and all those who's around her. Firefighter Cadena says basically she's involved in numerous capacities, but she is also dedicated and she is basically committed to her profession, to our organization, as well as our community. Firefighter Cadena can consistently demonstrate her commitment by being part of the hometown heroes, and I'm quite sure you've heard them. Basically, uh, the Hometown Heroes is a combination of um, all firefighters within Temp Fire Rescue who sings at performances throughout the city. And of course, they have sung at many sold out events, including the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning playoffs, um, as well as a lot of other events that we have as well. So if you haven't heard a voice, I can get her to do a note or two <laughs> along with me. <laughs> So in addition to that, uh, Firefighter Cardenas is a licensed yoga instructor and has utilized her knowledge and skill of uh, the art to instruct all new recruits for both Tampa Fire Rescue and Tampa Police Department for over the last five years. This effort supported by both departments as the core principal aid the new recruits with importance of proper exercise, breathing, relaxation, diet, nutrition, meditation, and positive thinking. She has also played a role with educating and instructing all hazmat technicians on Tampa Fire Rescue to help maintain their knowledge and skills within that specialty. Furthermore, she is one of the board members of the Matthew T. Bunch Foundation. This foundation actually supports uh, first responders and their families um, as well as the Tampa Fire Museum. For over the last five, six years, or, or since 2016, they have raised numerous amount of money, over $25,000 to assist with that program. Although her career and dedication has been improving our organization is due to the countless hours she has volunteered in multiple capacities, her example of leadership by mentoring and empowering her fellow firefighters and her passion for helping others in our community that is the reason Firefighter Sophia Cardenas has been recognized as Firefighter Quarter for Tampa Fire Rescue. And before we formally honor you, it sounds like you have a lot of fans here, so good for you. That's, that's wonderful. But we have some people who are here to honor you and to show the community's appreciation for what you and your family do for Tampa Fire. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Once again, Mike Billick, Tampa Firefighters Local 754, joined, <clears throat> joined by Jeremy Finney, Treasurer. Uh, Sophia, we would just like to say congratulations and thank you for all you do. Ultimately, we are so grateful for the servant's heart that you have and all the volunteering that you do to uh, make all of our lives better. So job well done. Thank you. Black here for you Thank to uh, have in your home just to remember today. Um, also, the members of Bush Gardens couldn't be here, so they asked us to provide this on your behalf or take it from Bush Gardens. Um, and not to steal Councilwoman Her Tax Thunder, but uh, talk about family, right? And obviously, the, the men and women who wear in the blue and white over here are part of our extended family. These first two rows are full. If we want to recognize your family again, if you want to stand or be recognized, I, I, I'm impressed with how close-knit and how tight-knit you are, not just that 
your husband and children are here, and I can't think of a single time that I've ever been at any volunteer event or fundraiser that I have not just seen you, but Roland, and your kids constantly, consistently. You're, again, you have a servant's heart, and we appreciate all you've done for Tampa Fire Rescue and Tampa Firefighters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I mean, first of all, I want to just say, everybody, the passion and the dedication that all of our first responders give to our city, it's, it's amazing, it blows me, blows me away. But um, I'm from the Strauss Center for the Performing Arts, and we should come get you over there to sing for us. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, come enjoy a night of theater on us. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Hi, Mark Haney with Zoo Tampa, and uh, Mary Lou Bailey, who is our board member, had to leave for another appointment. Um, this, this award today is really important to me because two weeks ago, um, my neighbor's house caught on fire. It was a five alarm fire in Seminole Heights, you probably heard, um, with a fatality. And my house caught on fire and the, the fire department was amazing um, and saved my house. And, and um, it just, I had the opportunity to see firsthand how the firefighters of, this, of Tampa are just amazing. I can't say enough. So. There's an annual membership to Thank the zoo, you. so bring the kids. They're the right age for the zoo. <laughs> they are. Thank and uh, we'll be happy to host you there. So. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hello. I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. I'm here to present you with a gift card to thank you so much for all that you do. You are seriously like... A superhero like <laughs> firefighter Barbie. Um, <laughs> please take the family Thank to you. any of our restaurants, enjoy a night out, and just relax. Um, we are really appreciative for all that you do for our city. Thank you so much. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Um, it sounds like the only part they didn't mention in all of your list of accommodations is that you're doing all of that in your free time while also being a mom and on one leg <laughs> and with a smile on your face. And it's truly an inspiration. Thank so you. please bring your family. Come see us at Tampa Theater. Uh, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Good morning again, Council. Um, good morning, Chief. Congratulations. I'm thank Jennifer you. Curry from Bill Curry Ford. And I've got some of my team here as well, Jeff and Leo. But I just want to thank you for your service. Um, we've included uh, a, a gift card to come get your, your car serviced, as well as a gift card to Amazon. But hopefully one day, if you retire, maybe you'll open a yoga studio, and I can learn, because I've always <laughs> wanted to do that. Sure. But thank you for everything that you do for our community. We really, truly appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Brian Ford from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had to step out to another commitment, so I get the honor to present the game ball from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Today, you are the MVP for the Bucs. And some of our favorite Buccaneers are on crutches right now, so it's kind of fitting, you know. So uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. So I'm Mike McCarthy with Steps Towing Service, and on behalf of Todd Stepp and Steps Towing, we'd like to present you with a gift card for dinner. You're not doing too much driving in the seat, so let us drive you around in our company limo, oh, cool. take a night off. Nice. We'll see you at the awards banquet soon. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to get you a chair. <laughs> uh, Steve Michelini, I'm here on behalf of a couple of different folks who'd like to honor you. Uh, there's the gift certificates for you. Thank you. Uh, yummy House China Bistro, you can enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of the meat market in Old Hyde Park, you can enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of the Chicho Restaurant Group, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And on behalf of Bella Brava in the Midtown, lunch or dinner. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll get on this side. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, please, of course. Go ahead, sir. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Council. Happy birthday. Um, my name is Aaron Hansen. I actually uh, was not expecting this, so uh, bear with me here. Uh, I'm the captain on our training division. I've been on for uh, about uh, 17 plus years, and I've had the pleasure of knowing um, uh, this young lady for or quite a uh, few of those. On a professional and personal level, I've seen her hand in hand, uh, her dedication to 
um, the recruits, the department, uh, what we're trying to put out there, keeping our firefighters uh, healthy, safe, is, uh, is second to none. So um, because of that, because of her dedication to her family um, and her ability to get along with pretty much everybody, uh, she uh, has to be one of the top five most well-liked firefighters, um, I don't know, in the country, maybe, if you've met her. Um, never a negative word, and this is uh, definitely long overdue. Uh, we will present this to you. Uh, this is Fire for the Quarterly Plaque. Congratulations. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, on behalf of a grateful city of Tampa and a grateful city council, it is our real pleasure and honor to give you this Tampa City Council commendation for all that you do and for all your amazing service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to say anything more. I want to thank everybody who's been a part of my journey the last 14 years and beyond that, before that. Um, this is my partner, Roland Alfonso. We've been together for 11 years. And in the beginning, when our families asked us if we were going to have children, I had to explain that I didn't want a third of my children's lives to be raised by someone else. Um, luckily, it's my family. They're the ones that are raising my children along with us. So this award is not just for me, it's for my whole tribe. They're here, and I'm very grateful for that. I feel blessed. Uh, I also want to thank my crew, <laughs> my biggest supporters, retired and current. My retired captain is here too, and I'm very grateful to have them. They are my, my family, my brothers, and they make coming to work easy. So thank you, Chief, for being my mentor in the beginning of my career, for getting me this job, helping me, guiding me. And thank you all. And uh, happy birthday to you, Councilwoman, and happy birthday, Braulio. <laughs> all right, thank you. Councilmember Randa. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know what I'm going to do when your tribe leaves. <laughs> the place will be vacant. It'll be for rent. It's full now. But thank you for what you've done and, and uh, these things that you've done. You really have to prepare yourself because there's so many things that, that, that happen in, in that division that from a natural gas leak, to a, a spill of some type of chemical, gasoline or whatever. And, and you have to go and understand all the things that are counteractive to those things getting out of hand. And not only that, it's very difficult to handle. Uh, you have stress on you all the time. and, and uh, you have to take it like it comes, and you've done a wonderful job. You haven't cracked anything. You've got more friends than, than I had votes, and, uh, <laughs> and these are things that, uh, that make things happen. In fact, I look into the crowd, and I see the young lady from Bill Curry Ford, and I remember well, that dealership was in, on Henderson and Florida Avenue many years ago, 100 years ago. So that tells you how long I've been around. But to you, it's your day. I know it's Councilwoman's birthday today. And, but uh, we're sharing that birthday with your honor and those that are here from your tribe, like you said, and your friends and your employees. But we're grateful for what you've done and more grateful for what you're going to continue doing for the rest of your career in the city of Tampa. God bless you and your family. Muchísimas gracias por todo lo que ha hecho. Gracias. Yes, Councilwoman Hurtet. I think the most amazing part was how um, when when Chief Tripp was describing you, she just kept going on and on. You're hazmat. You uh, are a talented singer. You also help teach everyone yoga. What don't you do? You are the true Renaissance woman, as they say. Uh, and obviously, your tribe helps with that. But that doesn't diminish your accomplishments. You. Uh, you obviously take it on because it's something you love to do and your passion is absolutely evident, um, especially with all of the folks who are around you. Uh, so happy to be here. It's just really wonderful. I don't think we've had a, a whooping session like that in a while for, uh, <laughs> for uh, um, one of these honors. And so it really just, it's very heartening and uh, I, I can just see the pride and the joy. It just radiates out of you and so, just congratulations and keep up the good work and find some time to rest <laughs> a little bit um, and enjoy all of the, the goodies you've gotten. Thank so you. Uh, you and your family deserve it. 
Council Member Carlson. Thank you to you, your family, and your tribe for all your service. Um, thank you for all your volunteer efforts. Um, you know, what really makes America a great country and Tampa a great city is the volunteers that do things that, that go above and beyond uh, what they're required to do. So thank you for that. And uh, I also want to point out that if you, if you look across just about any organization, high-tech companies, firefighters, et cetera, the best and brightest, the people who are high performers, they all are involved in the arts in some way or another. Uh, you know, we saw the, uh, the the mechanic guy earlier who I'm sure does some kind of sculpting on the side. You're a singer and um, and you're involved in yoga, which I would consider part of the arts also. Um, <laughs> but thank you for doing that. Tampa is a city that values the arts. It's growing and we need to make sure that we um, that we show that that it is important that we that we provide an environment that's conducive for the high performers like you to be happy here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Where's, where's your baby? Where does she go? I have two boys, Roland and Rocco. Oh, he, rock that's and a roll. boy. Okay, bring yeah, him up got, here. So I want him to come up here. Father. Get him. Rocco, come on. Yeah. Roland, come on. Come here, boy. We call him rock and roll. Oh, rock and roll. Okay. For a reason. <laughs> In fact, yes. I've known the family of your husband for 50 years. Hey, do y'all want to say anything to your mom? You want to say congratulations to your mom? Okay. Well, that's okay. You know what? I mean, the fact that you can get up and come do your job every day and have such a loving and supportive family and a team, um, which you've acknowledged, I really appreciate that. Your girl power is real strong today. Thank You're an you. outlier. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just want to know if your partner wants to say anything, since the boys didn't say anything. Do you want to say anything publicly? Um. Yeah, show your woman some love publicly. We like that. Thank you for everything that you do. We love you, and we're here for you all the time. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we will... Have um, just a few minutes to give everyone the change, and I will hand the gavel back over to Council Member Vieira. Comfort, let's take a picture. Okay, um, next, if you recall in the agenda, we were going to go to item number seven. So, for the, and I'll give 40 seconds. For you. And if, and if, I do, well, I've got a room full of fighters, thank God, if anything. Yeah, actually, it's getting a lot stronger. Do you got, any all, is it? They're not worried about that. I mean, they're, you know. They're the professionals, right? Okay. Okay. Um, and we'll start again in about 20 seconds. Okay. So um, we are going forward with item number seven, um, which is a resolution accepting a donation of 250 firefighting gray Inatex no mix hoods and with logo estimated value at about $26,000 from the Firemen's Benevolent Association of the city of Tampa. I don't believe we have anybody here to yes. speak on it from the, oh, we do from the administration, go ahead. And, but, and by the way, before we vote on this, we will take public comment, but it will be narrowly tailored only to item number seven. Go ahead, sir. Good morning again, council. Uh, Aaron Hansen, uh, Captain Tim Fire Rescue, uh, as well as the vice president of our benevolence and co-chair of the awards banquet. So a bunch of hats here. Uh, this is an organization that uh, extremely passionate about I've uh, been on for a very long time. I serve with uh, a lot of other board members. Uh, Chief Gilligan to, to my left over here is our treasurer. It's, um, it's an interesting organization. It's a charity. It's uh, uh, founded in 1909. So uh, Councilman Miranda, I think you said you're around 100 years old. This outdates you. Uh, 114 years. Uh, originally founded by Tampa firefighters um, here in the city. Um, 
benefit widows and children. It was a, uh, the original widows and children's fund, and it's evolved decade after decade to encompass the, uh, the issues that we face today, health, wellness, uh, mental health, the physical fitness aspect, and one of those is, uh, is cancer. So every year, the organization, 100% member-driven, we collect from our members, provide back to in any way that we can, uh, support-wise. Um, this, uh, this is an easy one for us. This is the second time that we've done this. Uh, we purchased these hoods here, our protective hoods, our Nomex hoods that go around our, our face, our necks. Um, years ago, it, it came out basically through all the cancer studies that this is something that can actually uh, prevent a lot of cancers that, uh, that we attain uh, throughout our careers. This hood program is basically a swap out. Uh, we allowed, we're allowed to take these hoods on, on the emergency scenes, swap them out, decon them, and then give the original hoods back. Um, 250 hoods for 700 and some odd firefighters. It's a great program. Uh, it is an absolute start in getting us head in the right direction. Highly valuable. If it saves one life, obviously, that's uh, our main goal over the years. So it's, uh, like I said, it, a very proud organization, been around for a very, very long time. Um, it's, it will continue to grow uh, and continue to serve those that, uh, that we aim to protect. Um, any questions? Thank you, sir. Any questions from council? Okay. And I know we have um, 754 if you'd like to come up, please. Yeah, I would just like to, Mike Billick, uh, Secretary of Tampa Firefighters, uh, I would just like to expound upon uh, what Captain Hansen said. As a proud third generation firefighter and a second generation Tampa firefighter, um, this is an invaluable thing uh, as we evolve as a fire service and we learn the risks that people in my father's generation may not have, have really been in tune with. The ability, you know, this, this thing right here, the ability to get a clean one of these is invaluable uh, immediately, right? So each district chief will have these hoods to be able to pass out when the frontline hood is, is dirty. We know that we want to shower within the hour. Sometimes, you know, the best we can do is get our gear, gear clean, do a very gross decon, and get as much soot off of us as possible. And when I put this hood back on that's dirty, I'm absorbing these carcinogens into my body. So what the benevolence has, has been able to do in providing these hoods is invaluable to the health and safety of the members of this local that serve the citizens of the city. So on behalf of Tampa Firefighters, we would just like to thank the benevolence for uh, stepping up and, and uh, being a, uh, a part of the solution. Thank you, Thank Council. you, sir. Anyone else? Uh, Chief, nothing? If, if, if you want to, you don't. Sure. Uh, Barbara Tripp, Tampa Fire Rescue Fire Chief. So once again, just want to thank the uh, um, benevolence for this donation. Um, as Driver General Billick stated, you know, this is part of the health and wellness that we're looking for the men and women of Tampa Fire Rescue. And of course, it just goes hands in hands with what we're doing for the future. As technology changes, there's so many different carcinogens out there. The air that we breathe, of course, it affects our firefighters every day of the year. So once again, by us being able to or the, um, by the firefighters being able to change out to keep from putting on that contaminated, you know, mask again, it's just going to help with the length of their life, the lifelong um, survival of the individuals. And as he stated years ago, you know, firefighters used to go on without any type of breathing apparatuses, you know, and technology is changing every day. So once again, just want to thank the benevolence for this great donation, and this definitely will be useful for the men and women of Tampa Fire Rescue. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Um, before we vote, did somebody want to say anything? Okay, just making sure. Um, before we um, formally vote on item number seven, is there any public comment narrowly tailored to item number seven dealing with protective gear from Tampa Fire Rescue? Okay, uh, the chairman of the uh, acting chairman of that committee is Councilman Miranda. Do you mind moving this item? Move sir? item number seven. Do we have a second. <laughs> Motion by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Hertek. Um, roll call, please. Or, I'm, yeah, roll call. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin? Anderson? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Number seven. Number seven. Oh, yes, on number seven. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Minnesota? Motion carried unanimously with Pendennis and Menasconco being absent. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and, and 
thank you for that presentation and for your words. Uh, everybody know a very personal issue for a lot of firefighters, including Mike and, and many others. So God bless you. Thank you okay, next we're moving to item number four, which is a uh, F dot transportation or strike that F dot update on Bush Boulevard as well as city council projects within the city of Tampa. If possible, can you do them both at the four and five at the same time? Yes. I would assume? Yes. So uh, F dot does intend to have the presentation that was uploaded stand in for both purposes if that's the pleasure of council so good morning council uh, brandon campbell representing the city's mobility department and i'd like to introduce you to uh, this morning's speaker from fdot uh, his name's eric henry and he is the district 7 uh, community traffic safety team coordinator he's going to present on bush boulevard uh, specifically and the uh, ongoing and and recent efforts that they have put forth on that corridor Morning, council members. Thank you for your time. Um, as Brandon mentioned, my name is Eric Henry. I'm District 7 CTSD, Community Traffic Safety Team Program Manager. Um, we were asked to give this presentation back in February, I believe, of this year. Um, we're just not getting a chance to present on it. So we have a lot to cover in just a short amount of time. So forgive me if I speed through it, but we'll be here to answer any questions and take any comments afterward. So um, typically, we try to approach safety, you may have seen this slide before, using the five E's. So education with things like PSAs, our in-person outreach, enforcement, partnering with local law enforcement, things like our ELE program, which I'll touch on in a bit, engineering projects, which we're very well known for, high friction surface treatment, things like that. Evaluation, so making sure that we evaluate these projects, we're not just putting them out there and hoping that they work, but evaluating them to determine that they are, and if they're not, maybe determine why not and encouragement as well, which is primarily an internal effort, but also external through things like trying to affect that safety cultural shift that you may hear talked about. So uh, we're gonna touch on these as they apply to Bush Boulevard. On the engineering side, we installed four uh, mid-block crosswalks, one at North 12th Street, one at North Brook Street, one at North Pawnee Avenue, and one, excuse me, at Overlook Drive. All four of these are pedestrian hybrid beacon crossings which if you're not familiar, look like the signal on the right here. They begin blank, traffic proceeds normally. When a pedestrian activates the crosswalk, it's gonna begin flashing yellow, indicating that vehicles need to prepare to stop before switching to a steady yellow and then a steady red. Vehicles come to a stop, pedestrians cross through the crosswalk as normal. Um, as pedestrians exit the crosswalk, it's gonna give that red wiggle waggle to the drivers, letting them know that they can proceed with caution before finally returning to a blank signal. Uh, traffic proceeds as normal, pedestrians aren't crossing. So a study conducted by Federal Highway in 2010 found that these do reduce uh, pedestrian bike crashes by 69% and even overall crashes by 29%. So we do know that these are effective and we have proposed two new mid-block pedestrian crossings, one at North 18th Street and one east of 22nd Street. Again, these are both PHBs and these are preliminary designs, not the final designs by any means. Um, additional engineering improvements in 2019 we installed raised median islands at seven locations and traffic separators at four locations along Bush. These provide a number of benefits, including providing refuge for crossing pedestrians. They minimize the number of conflict points for drivers and also can help reduce the speed of traffic by reducing the optical width of the roadway, as demonstrated on the right there. Um, additionally, on the engineering side, we have been a champion of leading pedestrian intervals in the state of Florida. Around two-thirds of the LPI in the entire state are within District 7. If you're not familiar, leading pedestrian interval essentially is a simple signal timing change, provides an additional three to six seconds after a pedestrian um, gets the okay to walk before conflicting vehicles are given the green. Um, this lets the pedestrian be out in the middle of the crosswalk before a conflicting vehicle um, gets to them, thereby hopefully preventing a crash from happening. We installed these at, I believe, six locations along Bush, all six of which were in 2021. Additionally, we installed dynamic speed feedback signs along Bush in 2019. Um, again, this was an example of evaluation. We performed a study on these and found that they did reduce the 85th percentile speed along that corridor. And at Bush and Armenia, we did see a reduction in the crash rate by more than 25%. Uh, we try to be data-driven when we look at these improvements. So looking at crash data along this corridor from 2015 to 2022, we see some kind of hotspot areas, particularly this one east of I-275 here. Um, and within this area, we have done some of the improvements that I've spoken about. So um, two of the uh, completed mid-block crossings were here and here, shown by the orange um, stars. And the two proposed PHBs are here and here, shown by the pink stars. And within this area, we have seen an improvement um, looking at crash data. 
So from 2019, 2020, we do start to see uh, improvement, which is when a lot of these uh, implementations were put in, uh, both in all crashes as well as specifically pedestrian and bicycle crashes. Further planned engineering improvements. Um, we have a project with construction set to begin in 2026 that will provide additional speech man speed management strategies. You can see the tif uh, typical section here on the right, reducing those lane widths down to 10 feet, adding straight, uh, striped and raised medians between North Boulevard and Florida Avenue, moving that two-way left turn lane, again, providing refuge for pedestrians, reducing the optical width, helping to slow traffic in addition uh, to those lane reductions there. There will also be um, sidewalk gap improvements um, along the north side between North Armenia and North Boulevard, and we'll be installing missing crosswalk legs where they exist at intersections along the corridor. So on the enforcement side, we continue to partner with law enforcement on high visibility enforcement throughout uh, the county. We had a campaign running from October of last year to May of this year in which TPD donated over 1,500 enforcement hours to enforcement in the county. We also have our enhanced law enforcement engagement program, which allows law enforcement to donate enforcement hours on certain high crash corridors in exchange for points, which they can then turn in for uh, items like speed radars, speed trailers, things like that. Um, we started this program last year. It was a six-month program, 22 agencies participating. We've continued it this year as a 12-month program with 25 agencies participating, and we have seen over 23,000 warnings and citations this issued thus far, 804 of which are from TPD. And finally, on the education side, um, when we launched those uh, four PHBs along Bush, we also rolled out a comprehensive safety education campaign, which included mailing postcards to households, leaving tip cards at local businesses. We did targeted social media advertising with geofencing so that drivers who drove along that corridor where those PHBs were installed would receive this ad you see on the right. There was a press conference. We've done in-person outreach. So all this to say that we didn't want to just put it out there and hope that people understood it and knew the benefit. We wanted to take the opportunity to educate people on what that safety benefit is and how to use the facility safely. So with that, thank you for your time. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and I want to, uh, for council members, for purposes of today in, in speaking, um, we're going to have the timer set per the rules at five minutes. If you believe that you'll need more time, uh, please let me know. And I'm more than happy to let you go beyond five minutes. If five minutes comes and you feel like you need more time, let me know and then we'll go on. But I just want to make sure to uh, do that. Uh, council member Miranda, go ahead. Anyone thank else? you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, th thank you for that fine report. It's, uh, well done, and it covers most of the uh, information that, on the changes that you, all of you have made with the Department of Transportation and so forth. There's one thing that, in my mind, we have never touched on, and that is that not all intersections work on the same direction. Let me tell you what that means, in my mind, anyway. If you're driving, you stop. It says five, four, three, two, one, and you stop. Then you get to the next one, and you think you're going to stop, but that one gives you an additional five seconds. The light stays green. So mentally, I think half the time, subconsciously, and I'm not saying that that's the, that's the answer to all, your mind cannot differentiate which is right. Because the, the stations of, of quality is different timing on every one of them. Not all of them at the same time. But you go to, I, I'll give you an example. You go down Armenia Avenue when you get to Armenia and right before the interstate, you can, you got five, five seconds. Even though it says off, you got five seconds. You get to the other side of the street, there is no five seconds. When it goes to zero, it's zero. So there's a difference in the time setting for whatever reason. And I've heard one reason that I, I just can't swallow. Oh, it's different because sometimes I have a left-hand turn. No, you can't have it that way. I'm not a psychiatrist and I'm not a genius and all that stuff. But if you have changing of signs at different locations with different times on the same type of signalization, we are creating a problem. Because in that set, your mind is not attuned to what, what intersection is this? Is it five seconds or not five seconds? And some give you five seconds, some give you zero. So therefore, that could be an indicator as to why there's more and more and more problems. Aside from that, it used to be the only thing you worried about, even when I was a kid to now, was another car. Now there's 10 times more cars, but there's also more what? Scooters, avenues of bicycling, uh, people without a scooter paddling themselves up, 
There's 10 different things that are on the street that were never there before. So now your mind has got to think not only where you're going, not only about the change of five seconds or not five seconds, you got to look this way behind you because you don't know what's there anymore. They're coming and they're riding in the middle of the street. You could come here on Kennedy Boulevard anytime after 5.30 or 6 and you'll find at least one person that's half nuts, I guess, on the center of Kennedy Boulevard, an electric scooter. <coughs> These people are nuts. And they get hit. I don't know where they're supposed to ride. The sidewalk? The thing that says for bicycle? The street? So you have a mixture of things that are going on now in society that was not before, not even 10 years ago. And I think it's not going to get any better. Because you're getting now the electric cars becoming more popular. There's about 20% more electric cars on the road this year than it was last year. You have a, you're going to have a great hearing, but you're not going to hear them. So that's another problem what we have that we haven't addressed. And I, I don't say you're going to have all the answers. What I'm saying is this is what I see as a driver. How, when you go in an electric car, you, you can't hear anything. So something has got to happen, whether they change. And when it, one thing about an electric car, you get close to another car, it'll tell you everywhere. People, you see the lights go on inside of you. You know what you're doing. So it's, it's altogether different than what it was just five years ago. You have all these new things that we've done to prepare ourselves, and we're still having more accidents and more death today than ever before. So there's got to be a reasoning. And uh, I, I think it's just too many things at once for a driver, no matter what it is. And, and you have not only the pressure of getting from point A to point B. And just yesterday, I saw where they have these things coming here. They're, they're third world countries have had them for a long time. You pay from one side to the other a couple of bucks. In this case, I heard $2, and it takes you directly to get more cars off, into, off the street. I think that's great. This happens in all the third world countries, and you have the third world country. The side is that big where it gets 15, 14. You can see it. This one, you see a little hand. You don't know if a one is a 13, or a one and six is a 16, or a six. They're right close together. We're crazy. We spend all these millions of dollars, and we make them that big. Make them big so that people can see. Take all the two stacks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilmember Hurtak and then Councilman. Um, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate this update. I thought it was really um, uh, great. I love the way, I love the, um, the direction that FDOT's going with trying to help slow down cars on these major thoroughfares to protect both bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, can you explain a little bit more about the ELEE -E program? Uh, you kind of sped through that. Is that encouraging folks to stop speeders? Sure. So the ELE program, something that we started last year, allows law enforcement to sign up to be a part of the program. There are certain high crash corridors that we designate, which they can then volunteer enforcement hours on. So they go out in details uh, and do enforcement on those corridors. And then in exchange for the number of enforcement hours that they put in, they are awarded with a number of points, which they can then use for things that their department is in need of. So speed feedback guns, speed radars, things like that. What do you mean by enforcement, though? So what what is the what is the goal? Just to stop speeders? Is it a I reckless it, drivers? I believe it's a general high visibility enforcement effort. Okay, okay. So just wanted to. Um, uh, there is one thing that I would really love FDOT to work on, uh, and I'm seeing this in more and more places. But the the one intersection that I think of is going north on Florida during rush hour at Hillsborough Avenue, and how more and more drivers are blocking the box. And what I mean by that is when folks on Hillsborough are going eastbound, they stay in the middle of the intersection, the light changes, and then no one at Florida going north can move. It stops for about 30 seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's not a long light. And that, you know, by design, thereby stopping traffic even more. Um, I know in different cities and states they do a block the box campaign. Uh, I know we have red light cameras at that space. And so I'd love to see what FDOT can do to help um, traffic move more smoothly in those types of areas. And again, the reason I bring that intersection up is because I know it is an FDOT intersection. 
Uh, but that's one of those things that I have seen in multiple locations for the city. Another one I can think of is um, uh, um, Dale Mabry at the exit of 275. That happens constantly on the north exit uh, area when you're, when you're heading south on 275. So just some of those things I would love to see in the future um, as we're improving the bicyclists and pedestrian safety that also impedes the safety of those bicyclists and pedestrians who are trying to cross north on Florida that reduces their ability to cross the intersection. So it's, it's really impeding a traffic in many ways. So uh, thank you again for this update. It's wonderful. I really love to see how we're trying to improve these corridors even more. Thank you for um, your work. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Quiet, sir. Yeah, on the blocking the box thing, I brought that up a couple years ago, I think before you came on board. And because in other, just about every other country in the world, it's illegal and there's a box there with a cross on it. Uh, but Vic said that the US standards don't allow us to put that in there. But I wish we could and I wish we could give tickets for it because it's, it's so dangerous. It happened to me yesterday on McDill and Bay to Bay. I was going north on McDill and somebody north of the intersection stopped to let somebody pull out and stopped everyone and almost caused accidents. And Anyway, um, an aside, yesterday I was at an event and I met two of your colleagues and they said to say hi and, um, and, and they'll probably tell you who they are. Anyway, it was, it was a funny coincidence to run into them. Uh, I wanna thank you, like my colleagues, for your presentation. And um, uh, it, was, it was short and full of information and thank you to the planners and everyone at DOT for uh, doing everything to make sure that we're safe. Um, the, the question I wanted to ask is, there are a lot of traffic studies, and um, and then you showed the, the data of the accidents. Has anybody, and this is not a trick question, just an honest question, I've never seen this before, has anybody done a pedestrian or bicycle traffic study um, to find out why people are walking and why they're riding bikes? Has anybody done a study like that? I can't recall any that we've done internally specifically, but I know there there's studies done about like trip generation, um, why, why people are, what mode of transportation people are using to get to their specific destination, but. I just think that, um, that it, it, you know, I talk about planning needs to shift from being around buildings to being around people, and this is an issue for the city, not for DOT, but um, we need to understand why people are crossing the road. Um, and one of the ideas is creating neighborhood commercial districts, and if we do that, then we can focus the the pedestrian and bicycle transportation corridors to help people get to those places. But if it's like haphazard and we're not directing people anywhere, we're not planning around people in those traffic, then then we're gonna be um, uh, haphazardly planning these these areas, um, which slow down traffic and, and don't necessarily allow pedestrians to get anywhere. Um, the other thing is, I don't know how often you can have these, but on on um, Bayshore, I go down Bayshore every day and um, with all the new uh, flashing lights we put on, people are still crossing where there are no crosswalks. I've seen people crossing within 50 feet of a crosswalk, and, and I've even seen people pushing baby strollers, knowing what happened a few years ago. I can't believe anybody's still doing that, but people are pushing baby strollers 50 feet from a crosswalk because they don't wanna wait and push the button. And so somehow we have to figure out, um, uh, and, and this is a question for the city mostly, but we need to find out why are people doing that and how can we how can we help them to uh, to be safe? Um, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, okay, uh, and thank you very much, sir, for that. You know, it's funny that Councilman Carlson mentioned Bayshore. Every time I go down Bayshore, it's it's such a um, uh, I don't want to call it stressful experience, but it's just you're you're very 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 careful on Bayshore as we should everywhere. And I want to always make sure that that you know same feeling is on Bush Boulevard. Um, you know, and so I'm glad this was brought forward and whatnot. Um, one of the things that I'd motioned for uh, maybe a month ago was to have the Planning Commission return on a study of, the, of this particular corridor, Bush and Fowler, for potential additional development, because, you know, this is um, an area that's so ripe for development, not just commercial development, but residential re development. We have a lot of people who come to City Council, especially from uh, South Tampa, Councilman Carlson's district, and say, please, no more building here. Well, I think in North Tampa, 
there's so much potential to build out there, and um, and obviously we'll need uh, you know the, the transportation advancements for that. One of the things folks always talk about. I know we had Mel Lone in here from Mel's Hot Dogs, or maybe formerly from Mel's Hot Dogs soon, um, uh, talking about having a lower uh, speed limit on Bush Boulevard. Could you just briefly tell me where y'all are at in that regard? Um, I'm not personally familiar with that's our, fine with that. Until okay, then perhaps. that's fine. We can. I, I can my check. Here. Maybe I can. If not, we can. I'd certainly be happy to get that information. Yep, that's, that's fine. I can go through back channels and whatnot. But um, and I know a lot of concerns, especially around Chamberlain, uh, with uh, you know kids around the Chamberlain School and and whatnot. But but again, thank you so much for this, sir. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next presentation from F. Dot, I believe. Or was that it? Oh, that was it. What do you know? Okay, okay, my bad, my bad. Okay, um, so next we go, if we may, and thank you guys very much for your presentation for public comment. Um, if you're here for public comment, please stand and be ready. Uh, we go through virtual first, correct? Let's do um, virtual first. Mr. Randolph, if you can hear me, please unmute yourself. You have three minutes to speak. Good morning. Uh, my name is Michael Randolph, and I'm with the uh, West Tampa CDC. I want to start off first by wishing Councilwoman um, Henderson a happy birthday, and congrats on your new bookstore. I want to talk about our upcoming workshop on artificial intelligence, GPT, and Web3 and its impact, positive impact on poor communities. This workshop will be between six to eight weeks and will focus on using AL, artificial intelligence, as a tool to even the playing field in poor communities by unlocking the opportunities that were limited to the privilege. This workshop is on November the 10th. Only 10% of the nation is familiar with the potential for AL, um, for artificial intelligence. This workshop is going to focus on education, wealth, uh, general wealth building, employment, health, game applications, as well as the Web3. Web3 is the next big revolutionary leap in the internet. It's a leap that focuses on blockchain, blockchain, NFTs, and crypto. One of the most important aspects of artificial intelligence is education. As you know, schools throughout the nation and poor communities are failing our kids. Remember, um, just elementary. With this new technology, it tells education. Everyone learns in a different way. Some people learn as listeners, others as more virtual, and others listen, learn by more on the hand. AI also help identify students' needs and optimize their potential. By giving all students the same start, and those, and those in poor, with poor backgrounds will gain the skills necessary to get ahead. This would also level the playing field when it comes to outcome. Artificial intelligence enables virtual learning systems that have the potential to make education more accessible for people from backgrounds, especially those that are economically disadvantaged. This changed the whole narrative when it comes to education in our schools. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Okay, great. Okay, so in person, please go ahead, sir. And for Mr. Pressman, if I may, sir, let me wait until Mr. Shelby comes in for you, if you don't mind. Sure. I don't know where Mr. Shelby is. And what I'm going to do on yours, I'll check with Mr. Shelby, is you can make your statement and whatnot now during public comment, and then council will substantively address it after public comment. So, but I want to wait for Mr. Shelby to come here, if you may. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, good morning to the council. Happy birthday, Councilwoman. Uh, my presentation before I begin... And I if I may, your name, sir. My name is David Cornell. Good morning. Thank you, David. <laughs> I'm glad to be here again. Let's see if I've got this correct. There we go. I was a proud veteran uh, in Desert Storm, Desert Shield, uh, as well as uh, Operation Just Cause. I'm proud to be here for the council. Um, my presentation will be about... 
Do I have that right? Yeah, Indigenous People and Columbus Day, uh, which is this Monday. I have some Native American blood in me, so that is why I'm doing this presentation. Um, so, we have a brief mention of the book that I'm working on, Buffalo Soldier of Common. In there, the cavalry are buffaloes, actually buffaloes, they're not actually horses, but they're buffaloes in the fictitious book. And uh, they're written by uh, African-American soldiers led by a woman named Amanda Logan. So, one moment, please. And then we talk about my Catholic graduation certificate mailed by my sister, Lucy Cornell, who assists the mayor of New York City. And there we have it over here. I mention it because a lot of my foundation, particularly uh, without uh, drugs in my life, uh, was because of my Catholic education. And you might see this guy over there, D. Cornell, when I was a young man. He's kind of cute, kind of handsome. And I'm glad to have my Catholic certificate. I'm very pleased and honored to have that mailed by my sister. Additionally, my foundation, despite my Catholic background, right now was given me to my Indian grandmother, Wind Wolf Woman, Tate Mahento We, of the Lakota people. There's a book that she introduced me. And uh, so as I continue on, let's see what we got here. We talk a little bit more about the Sons of the Wind. And uh, my religion is Native American spirituality. And, uh, and my Catholic fir firmament background is there. Glad to have them both there. And I'm also a graduate of We the People, the Citizens, and the Constitution, taught by a lawyer, and uh, talks a lot about rights. And we have rights here, but we have privileges, and it's a privilege to be here as well as a right. And I'd like to briefly talk about the U.S. Constitution, gives us a lot of rights. Congress has a lot of financial things. And as I sum this up, let's talk briefly about Christopher Columbus. So there it is. I'll let it without comment. It reads, Christopher Columbus, and I'll let the public read that. Not all of it's good, but it is what it is. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Next, please. And Mr. Pressman, I was just speaking to Mr. Shelby. He would rather that you go last so that we can sort of, I guess, if you will, have your comments uh, fresh in mind. So is that okay with your schedule, I assume, to wait about 15 minutes? It is, Mr. Chairman. I, I have to be in Day City for a hearing at 1.30, so I'm just watching the time closely. Thank you. Okay, but are you okay waiting 15 minutes, I assume? Yeah. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Next speaker, please. My name is Pepper Williams, located at 1120 Scott Street, Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. I've been coming down here for year after year after year. And on my part, we get no results whatsoever. But we're going to still be coming and see y'all, even if we have to look at y'all faces. But you know what? I want to give you a little history, what they call black history. I can understand why the governor don't want to be taught in school. I don't want to be taught in school either. Black history is one of the worst history in the world. Better here in the United States called America. Long, it ain't been a long time ago. Not too long ago, they killed a little young boy with the same age I was during that time, 14 years old, Emily Teal. They murdered him. Just the other day, not too long ago, the church called Emmanuel. The white boy went in church, like he was going to prayer meeting, got walked in there with a gun and killed nine people. One of the most ridiculous things ever been done. But we have to understand, I got a black history museum in my church. The city don't want to help me no kind of way. It's raining in my church, raining in the parsonage, it's raining all over the place. Can the city help me put a roof on the church? Can y'all do that? City council, y'all can order something like that. Y'all got city work, but they won't do nothing. They say, no, we don't help the people at church, non-profit organization. But we need some help. 
we need some help and we need it in a hurry. We can't just wait around for y'all to sit on your behind and to do nothing. We need y'all to do something. Help us, regardless of what the color of our skin is. We need some help and we need it right now. And that's what it's all about. Y'all entertain the police and the firefighters. Why don't you entertain people that are not able to do nothing for themselves? And I'm on a fixed income. Nobody want to come to my rescue whatsoever. And now they're trying to take my home. They're trying to do everything to hurt black people. And uh, we got to try to stop it one way or another. You know what? I'm going to Washington in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to go up there to talk to the, to the uh, what y'all call it? They call themselves the Supreme Court. We're going to go up there and talk with them and see what they got to say. Because you're not treating the black people right. You're treating us negative. You treat us worse than you treat the damn dog. Y'all treat dogs better than you treat us. And we need some help. And we the taxpayer, not the dog. The dog don't pay no taxes. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. You got something to say? Uh, you get 30 more seconds. Go ahead if you want to finish up, sir. What you got to say? You got 30 more seconds if you'd like to speak more, sir. Yeah. 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds? Yes, sir. You give me that short of time. 30 more seconds starting now. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> That's all right, man. I don't Thank need you. no 30 seconds. What I got to speak on Thank Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you. Next, please. Good morning, council members. <clears throat> I am Fran Tate, a newly retired community servant. 31 years, H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center, greatest place in the world to work. Um, I'm also the president of Jackson Heights Neighborhood Association and a ETCRP member. Uh, first, I'd like to say happy birthday to Councilwoman Henderson. Um, next, I want to talk about the um, lottery system. Um, Last evening, uh, all seven of you all received an email uh, generated by myself. Um, I had permission of my neighborhood association members to um, include uh, them as well. And it was in reference to the restructuring of the East Tampa CAC of Partnership. Now, we were fully aware that we would be restructured. <laughs> and, um, what we're not understanding is, uh, and what we don't agree with, is the lottery system that was explained to us. Um, it was used to select certain association members who would sit on the CAC board. How these members were selected, or why these certain members were selected, we want to know. Um, we also want to know we also know that there are 15 seats on the CAC. The question is, why can't the 13 associations in East Tampa have an equal seat at the board with the two uh, ex-officio seats? We want a clear understanding. We want our CRA to support us as well as we support it. Right now, that's not happening because there's so many questions about this new restructuring. It was just sort of told to us at our meeting on Tuesday and without any clear understanding. There are people being added to the CAC that didn't even know that they were going to be one of the neighborhood associations on the CAC. I spoke to one um, association specifically, had no idea, but they're a listed to be, I, I walked out and left my cell phone, rushing, trying to get here, and I want to show you the ones that were selected, the ones in yellow, but we will be back on Thursday, and we'll go into more detail about this, but this is such an unfair system, and we need your support to help structure it more, um, more, Fair. thank you, more favorably to the East Tampa CRA. Why are we on a lottery when other CRAs are not on a lottery? That doesn't sound fair at all. Thank you so very much. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you. Uh, next, please. Good morning. My name is Cynthia Few. 
I live at 4506 North 29th Street, Tampa, Florida. I have been a resident of uh, East Tampa for 75 years. I have been the president of Belmont Heights College Hill Neighborhood Association for 14 years. All of a sudden, uh, College Hill and Belmont Heights has been separated. I was never made aware of this and uh, I'm told by Fran Tate that uh, they've even taken off the College Hill is not on the boundaries anymore. And I would like to understand why it's the Janelle's office isn't being more transparent and fair about uh, how they're setting up the new associations and how they're treating the association, I think we're one of the oldest associations in uh, Tampa, and I was never made aware of they were separating College Hill and Belmont Heights, and now uh, they have a new president of, they're calling it historic College Hill, uh, Belmont Heights, and I just don't understand, and I had to call and ask Janelle's office if I was still the president, because another person told me that they were the president of uh, Belmont Heights. So I would just like more transparency and uh, fairness in the way we're being treated in East Tampa. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, we appreciate you. Next, please. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday. And uh, well, the, first of all, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I just want to find out from the city council uh, about small and businesses. Ma'am, if I may please, your name? Oh, Sally Issy Lee, the Volunteer Thank Missionary you. Society Penny Fund. And I just wanted to ask a few questions like the rest of the ladies are in question. Are you all intend to give any discretionary grants to the small businesses, black businesses that are owned like mine? I have been years, well, first of all, when God asked me to work, walk 5,000 miles for housing and homeless, I told him, no, God, you got the wrong person. Well, so I'm about at the end of the 5,000 miles, and I would duly like to know if I'm accepted to get a discretionary grant or something. Uh, Miss Erica invited me for next uh, week, but I came this week because it was someone God wanted me to meet, so we all was sitting down there in overflow. Are you all going to treat us fairly? and give, you know, like you do for $30,000 for a Wayne Peppy uh, painting. Can y'all make some room and give us something? So just like the, the ladies and gentlemen said, we want to be treated as well as dogs. Do, do y'all have any bones or, or leftover for us as being small business growing and being profitable in the community? Because my volunteer missionary center needs help, I have insurance and all that, and I'm a vendor for Tampa Housing. But nobody is paying us any attention about our welfare and, and being able to open our doors. Will you all consider that and offer me some help, maybe a discretionary for $25,000 or so? Have some respect for us as being small business people and servants of our community. And our hands are tied. We can't help do anything. And I don't see where we ever get any money from you all. And I would like you all to consider me, the Volunteer Missionary Society, as a, a, a worthy person and program of getting funded through you all. Y'all have discretionary money to help you when you want. And I would like to be included on that list. And I will be back next week, next week with Miss Erica Moody. And I would like you all to have an answer for me, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And if you'd like to speak to my aide, Brandon, uh, 
we can, she can, if, if she's hearing, she can meet you outside on that if you'd like. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you All very right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, please. Good morning, Council. Michael Bishop, Southeast Seminole Heights. Um, it's kind of on the agenda today under administrative updates, SIRE. I've had a lot of opinions about SIRE for a long time. I'm not sure what you think of SIRE. For me, it's our window into what happens here. And it should be as digitally accessible as possible. The city made commitments to keep that up as an archive so that we can review decisions that were made in the past and decisions that are in front of you now. And I think it has been a disservice to the community that we have let that infrastructure be neglected for so long. And I have been asking questions about when is it coming and what are the plans for us to do to not let stuff like this happen more. Um, if it was an internal tool that was only used by the clerk and a couple of people behind the desk and I never saw it, I wouldn't have any questions. But this is about the community understanding what is happening with city council. You want more engagement from us? You want to improve voter turnout? Make it as dead simple as possible for us to get information off of the web and make it as accessible as possible in text format so that everybody can access it and have an opinion. That's what I've been asking for. We can go around and around about when Sire was put to death by the vendor. We're three years past their support for the software. They don't want liability for it. So there's a whole slew of issues that have been going on, and all I've been asking is that we take some real consideration for the way the public interacts with this city digitally and not some kind of leftover 10-year-old run-down piece of software. It's not a huge investment. I'm not questioning the, the spending. Everything, every dime that gets spent here, every land use decision that gets made here, it is done through the agenda and those documents. And we need to take care of that. And that's what I've been asking. So whatever timeline you get today, great. We've been asking for this for over a year. But keep in mind, again, the software was end of life by the vendor almost three years ago. It's running on a version of Windows Server 2008 that has been unsupported by Microsoft since the end of 2020. All of our supporting documents, everything related, is running on this server. So whatever timeline you hear, again, I said, take that with a grain of salt. And I would just like to just make sure that maybe we start thinking about a master plan for digital technology as opposed to just, I mean, Acela was let to go 15 versions unupdated, and it still has broken pieces, and it's still a poor piece of software for the public to interface with. So I'm asking us to start looking at this stuff and be serious about where we're at with some of these infrastructure problems. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Next, please. Um, good morning, Connie Burton. Coming here to this council and having to pass the Jackson House and look at the city's agenda tells me clearly what you, you all, this city, thinks of the black community. Week after week after week, we are asking for ways in which economically we can be included and not remain an eyesore. Item number 57 and item 30 is disturbing to me that only $500,000 will be set aside to deal with rehabbing issues. And it don't say East Tampa because we can't get a damn thing done in East Tampa. We can't spend our money. We can't say who we want to represent our interests. We are still struggling like the Jackson House. <laughs> Item 30, slew of people be put on boards and that is the mayor's choice. We've had city staff people put on that board. We've had conservative people put on that board and the problem still exists and yet, you all failed to even ask the executive director of the Housing Authority to come here and speak as to how homelessness is continued. How do you build such a beautiful structure and the people cannot even get in there and rent? It looked good on the river, but it ain't benefiting us. It was once public housing, West Tampa, people talk about years they lived in apartment 55, but I know for a fact that our black community has been the fodder for funding to come down, 
continuously. It be the funding for executive staffs to eat. It be the funding for people to go to jail so those folks can have a job. It be the funding our black folks to be the funding for people to have long-time retirement. When we look at this agenda every Thursday, it don't tell me how economically our community is going to be improved. It do not. You all need to stop playing games. You wrote a resolution in 2020 saying that you recognize the effect of slavery. You must be don't because we still have the effects of it. The disparity still exists. The voices of our community, those of us that is towing the soil daily, trying to give hope to our community, it is empty. We can't provide no economic opportunities for our people. We can't solve not one problem, even when we are on these boards being elected by our community. It has to stop. Accountability goes to the mayor. It goes to you. I'm hoping that our community is paying attention because somebody's political career is going to have to be stopped until y'all be accountable to the people. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate that. Uh, next, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say um, uh, if, if I understand what happened with item number 57 and it wasn't, it's not very clear. So I'm asking that item 57 be pulled. Sure, that's right. Um, and then uh, Kayon uh, <coughs> Henderson talked to me about it yesterday. She just wants to uh, attend virtually to explain. That's fine. I think that would be wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So we'll be pulling item number 57. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, sir. Or <coughs> go ahead. Allison Hewlett, East Tampa resident. Um, there were a uh, few businesses that were here to be able to make public comment. Unfortunately, when you own a business, you can't uh, stay for long of time. So I am um, requesting on their days that public comment cannot start at the beginning, that it is noted on the agenda, um, because our small businesses need help here in, in East Tampa especially. You have large companies who came through the COVID and all the recession and inflation, and they're able to afford business consultants to be able to help streamline their processes. Well, our businesses need that technical assistance. Most of our business owners, they are trained in fixing the cars and doing the hair and doing the nails, but they did not get a business degree. But we have um, really good providers in our community, and I think Nicole Travis mentioned during your budget meeting, who can provide those direct services to our small businesses who hire locally, who are able to increase those wages. So I encourage you to look at um, who you are funding to make sure that our small businesses get the assistance needed. Um, as far as the East Tampa CRA, I am very concerned about the divisiveness that is uh, being occurred, especially with our neighborhood associations. The lottery system does not make sense to me. If there was a potential community redevelopment plan or economic development plan, you could potentially say, okay, then these neighborhoods should sit on this board, for example, Le Legacy at Fair Oaks, because we're doing the most major investment of city dollars into that area, rather than have it be a generic lottery on someone may or may not sit on the board. And I also encourage you also to look at the neighborhood association creation because they are, as Ms. Cynthia Few mentioned, they are dividing communities. They are not talking and communicating and provide transparency to know that we are splitting neighborhood associations. And even if it's the point that a neighborhood, is, neighborhood members came and asked the city to do this, at least the people will be able to know that there was a reason why you were splitting neighborhood associations and not trying to split the community. So there will be, um, I think, a lot of folks attending the CRA meeting um, next Thursday. Um, but since it, it just happened, um, I thought I should mention that as well. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you. Next, sir. Go ahead, sir. And Chesna, Tampa, Florida, one thing I like to say and one thing I've known all my life, <coughs> if you don't know how to loop out of it, you remain a beggar all your life in the presence of these white folks. We African people have to learn to loop out of it because y'all people have never recognized us. Built all the white Western civilization on our back 623 years from 1400 and nothing treats us the same way and it's the same complaints. 
But check this out. It's not all doom and gloom. The city has made enormous strides and advancements in many areas. But as an African person, it's difficult to acknowledge the positive side of the city as we're getting left behind, especially when the city leadership won't address anything that is substantial or life-sustaining to African people. It's irresponsible to talk about suicide and not mention suicide prevention. It's also irresponsible when you come and give a person year after year for as long as you can remember awards for people who are drunk driving and not talk about the liquor companies, not talk about the alcohol manufacturing companies. That's irresponsible, very irresponsible. It's irresponsible not to talk about reparations in 2023. Reparations will solve 90% of African people's problems. That's all we need. We just need the reparations y'all owe us, and y'all owe us, and we're going to get paid for it. Don't think, don't ever think, no matter how you think, how you live, how you feel, whatsoever your white nationalist position may be, that African people, our parents, great-grandparents, great-great-great-grandparents, going back to 1400, worked for white folks for free. <laughs> no way, no day. We're going to get our reparations. And I also want to expose the name of the chief judge, Christopher Sabella, and a judicial, a circuit court judge, Alyssa Ellison, a racist white woman. I was in court last Wednesday, the woman's going off on a whole diatribe of things and didn't even have the slightest idea what she's talking about. The other attorney had to stop her. Oh, ma'am, it didn't happen that way. The other thing is, it's a young man sitting in prison right now for a racing incident or homicide resulting down in Bayshore Boulevard. But the people who need to accept responsibility for Bayshore Boulevard, who's the city of Tampa, that young man sitting in prison, but the city accepted no responsibility for trying to merge industry, 30 residential. Seconds, but 30 seconds, go ahead. Thank you very much. Residential, commercial, and industrial with construction and Bayshore Boulevard and the, narrow, and the bicycle lanes, whatsoever they're doing down there. The city of Tampa has some complicity in making Bayshore Boulevard a dangerous place to drive. And you just feel so nervous driving there because anything can happen. Anything can happen. So the young man sitting in prison, it might have been 10% of his fault, 90% the city's fault. Thank, you very, fault. thank you very much for the additional time. Yes, sir, thank you. Next, please. Good morning. Um, my name is Keela McCaskill, resident here in Tampa, member of most of the neighborhood associations that called me once they received. Some received an email, some found out by half and chance about changes in the East Tampa CRA. And I know this is not the platform to share it, but it happened suddenly. So I felt the need to share it now and we'll be back at a later time. So members of the East Tampa community, which I've encouraged to join THAN so that they can have additional support and learn more about how neighborhoods should work. So we're asking THAN to also support by the next meeting. So recently I've, you know, I've pondered, really been forced to sit back and ponder why doing good or doing what's best for neighborhoods is such a problem. What's so wrong with allowing the people that pays into the district to make decisions on what they feel they want, particularly when it's within the comprehensive plan that we have. Although it's from 2004, it's relevant today, and they're asking for nothing outside of that plan. Not only that, their requests are well within the spirit of a CRA. So I, I, I cannot come up with an answer as to why this is so problematic, why the treatment, why the disrespect, why the disregard for what they want, what we want, in a community, they see everywhere else thriving in the city. They want to see some results too. So again, I, I can't answer that question. So again, they're not asking for anything out of the CRA. And not long ago, you all from here saw a presentation that describes the CRA or the people that represent the community. They were frustrated. They're agitated. I mean, a list of negative adjectives as a result of the people. That was a year and a half ago. I'm telling you right now today, they're still there. 
You all, as a result, requested a restructure. You all said, hey, we want to see something different. We want to see some different results. So you requested a restructure. So since you requested a restructure, I'm asking you to make sure that the, the restructure is favorable with including community input, with including what they're asking for. Because these recent changes remove the ability to hear from the people that live and breathe East Tampa or Ebor or West Tampa or whatever community it is, but specifically today I'm talking about East Tampa. It removes you from hearing from the people. You'll be taking instruction from the administration and whoever they talk to. None of them, I believe, I'd gamble, none of them live in this area and they're making decisions. You all asked for a restructure. I'm asking you to hear from the community. Pull this restructure, sit down with the community, sit down with the administration, and find something favorable. You're not giving them anything. Remember, they've paid some 20, 30. This woman says she's been here 75 years, paying it to the district. We're not giving her anything. They want to be heard, and they want favorable outcomes. That's not a difficult ask. They're not asking for handouts or favors. They just want to be heard with favorable, positive outcomes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right, next. Good morning, Stephanie Pointer. Um, I'm gonna get to the neighborhood stuff in a minute, but I wanna talk about the stuff that's on the agenda. Eight through 10, have we actually renewed the red light program? Because in the 600 pages worth of documents, it said it hasn't been renewed yet. I haven't seen it on the agenda. Maybe it's just me. Sometimes I miss things. But if we're going to renew contracts with people and pay them with a contract, then we should certainly make sure that we're actually going to be giving red light camera tickets this year. So that, that concerns me. Um, number 11 on the agenda is a $239,000 mobile command center for Tampa PD. It's going to be shared with St. Pete Fire? I'm confused. Why would the pol our police department and their fire department be collaborating on something? I would think it would be TFR, but anyway, you, you can ask. It's not really for me. Um, number 60, impact fees being used in areas not impacted. What I read about it was that it, this seems to be something Tallahassee was nice enough to preempt us on. But what my question is, is why is the whole city not charging impact fees? If you go to West Tampa and build the same thing you're building in my neighborhood, there's no transportation impact fees. Why? Somebody please explain that to me. Because the roads are just as crappy there as they are in my community. Although I can't get anybody to tell me if the impact fees are actually being paid. I don't know. I can't, nobody will tell me who's going to do it. When I got it, I got a big long document from the legal department. I did not get what I wanted, which was the amount of money that was paid and if all, if all of these developments have paid their bills. Just like the business tax fees, I keep hearing that stuff's not being paid. If people aren't paying the city what they're supposed to be paying them, then we don't have any money to pay the people who work for the city. And then everybody gets all butthurt about it. Um, let's see. I, I followed up with the FDOT guys about the traffic issues on Dale Mabry, south of Gandy, because I think that's a big issue, and they have no clue about how McDill works. Um, I support number six. I think it's a great idea to move that pipeline off the environmentally sensitive property. So let's talk about neighborhood empowerment for just a second. We have five people who are in charge of neighborhood empowerment. Five. There used to be one. Marie Holmes used to do it all by herself. I'm going to say that again. Now there are five people who do the job of one person. And the person who took her position got a big fat raise on top of it. Okay, I want you to understand that there's no reason that the neighborhoods don't understand what's going on in this city. Where are the five people? I'm going to tell you one of them. When you guys came to the meet and greet the other night, there were some, some of you council members were there. Our empowerment person walked in the door, threw some Chotskys on the table, and turned around and left. They did not speak to me. They did not speak to any of the other neighborhood leaders there. They turned around and left. What exactly are they doing for their paychecks? Because I haven't seen them in a year. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pressman, go ahead, sir. And now before uh, you go, sir, uh, Mr. Shelby. So Mr. Pressman apparently is going to be requesting a reconsideration of a legislative matter, and this is the appropriate form for him to do so, correct? That's correct, sir. Okay, and once he's done, do we take...
comment on his request? I mean, public comment, or do we just go to council and discuss? You go to council on this. Okay, good, because I don't think I've ever had this. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, council Thank members. you for your patience. Co thank thank you. you. I'm glad to be christened by Mr. Shelby to proceed. Uh, Todd Pressman, 200 Second Avenue South, number uh, 200 in St. Petersburg, Florida. I am here in regard to CPA 2309, which this council reviewed last week on Thursday, which was at the corner of Albany and Juneau. The council was not too pleased with it. Um, what I'm here to ask for is a reconsideration, which that action would allow the application to come back in a shorter time period because there's a 12-month preclusion. But we would make major changes. We'd be able to address the issues by council. Uh, I would look at bringing it back under a PD, which would give you complete, unfettered, uncompromised ability to control the exact issues. Rather than it being a full spectrum of CI, commercial intensive zoning, we would pull it back to a very specific and lower zoning use. We would also be able to control it only to the property that's abutting. There would be no access or any um, use of the local roads. The, we could condition the access only being from waters. Those are two of the major concerns that I heard from council. And again, uh, we'd be happy to work with your staffs and I would reach out to the single HOA representative that was here as well to coordinate, communicate with them, make sure it's something that they're comfortable with or make them as comfortable as possible. So again, this would come back, you would have 100% unfettered, unobstructed control of every inch where previously it was a full wide spectrum CI of uses after the comp plan amendment would be approved. Uh, the only decision today is if it can come back without a preclusion of the 12 month uh, period. So with that, we appreciate your consideration and uh, we believe we can move forward very positively with your uh, help and consideration today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pressman. Okay, uh, Mr. Shelby, the next position is, and Ms. Pointer, I don't think we can take public comments on this, right, Mr. Shelby? It's not a public hearing, it's a request for reconsideration of a legislative matter. And it falls within the confines of public comment, therefore, unless if somebody hasn't spoken already, they can't, correct? Well, it's not for, it's not set. Councilman Carlson. Um, wait, Mr. Shelby, finish and then Councilman Carlson. Well, let me just, let me just give you a background, Council. Just, this doesn't happen, it has not happened in quite some time. Um, with regard to the rules that are um, uh, before you, a motion, to reconsider a, a motion to reconsider an action of council shall be made only by a member who previously voted on the prevailing side and shall be made only at the same meeting or at the first subsequent regular meeting. A second to the motion may be made by any member. Anytime there is a need for reconsideration by council and there is not a full council present, the council may continue reconsideration to the next regular meeting when there is a full council present. Those are the two rules that would apply. So we can, do we need a motion to continue that or can it just bump up to the next one? I, I just want to know what our rights and it would be. It are. would be a motion to, it okay. would be a motion to, to, to uh, bring up a motion to reconsider. Now mind you, council, what you have before you is a request for reconsideration of the legislative matter. And again, as you know, uh, the um, comprehensive plan amendments are legislative. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that if council does wish to reconsider it, uh, a motion to reconsider would be in order. It would require a second. There could be debate, mm -hmm. debate on that motion. And if that motion should pass, what that does is that brings you back to the point in time prior to that previous motion being made. Mm -hmm. That motion being made last Thursday sure. to, to deny on a six to one vote. Um, and that's where you are standing now. So just for the purposes of the record, you have two members absent. Uh, and uh, the question then is, does council wish to entertain the request? And if so, then a motion to, um, uh, to um, uh, have uh, reconsideration would be in order. Thank you, sir. And you can discuss that, and if you want to discuss it prior to ma the making of a motion. Thank you. Before I uh, Councilman Carlson, Councilwoman Hurtak, Ms. Johnson Velez, did you want to say something? Susan Johnson, Velez Legal Department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I did just want to clarify that what was before council was a comprehensive plan amendment, um, which again is a legislative decision. It involves the future land use designation yeah. and council's consideration of the maximum potential development that could take place on the property. And so what I heard the uh, Mr. Pressman talking about was coming back with a rezoning application, which again doesn't, yeah. right, is not part of a comprehensive plan yeah. application or hearing. So well I, just wanted, I just wanted clarification Thank before you. you're welcome. Councilman Carlson, Councilman Hurtak. 
Yeah, uh, um, uh, Mr. Preston has a great reputation. He's great at dealing with clients and representing them. Um, my concern is, uh, number one, the lack of any kind of public input. Number two is um, is setting some kind of precedent. If, if it's in the rules, um, none of us have seen anything like this before. I don't want a whole bunch of projects coming through um, that have have been like this. They, if the um, if if narrowly the rules say that we can uh, defer this because of a lack of full counsel, um, what what I think I, I think we shouldn't rehear these at all. But if we do. Um, at the very least, we should only vote to put it on the agenda so that we can get public input about rehearing it. It should not, we should not vote today on whether to rehear it. We should schedule it so the public can give input on it. Thank you. And if I can, I, I, I do want to clarify that passing a motion to reconsider, particularly for something that was set for a public hearing, would require the process to begin again for sufficient notice in advance and it would come back at a public hearing if council were to decide to do that. Um, with regard to your comment, uh, council member Carlson, you raised an issue about wanting to have the public speak to whether or not to have reconsideration. I, I, I don't like a process where, where we make a decision to, to reopen something uh, or rehear it uh, without without public input. I don't like doing it at all because I'm af I'm now afraid there's going to be 50 people in line to do this every week, um, and so I'm in general ag against that. Uh, but but if we're going to do anything, the only thing I would maybe vote for would be to put it on the agenda as a discussion, so the public could also give input as to this decision. We get public input on on a reconsiderations, uh, so it seems like we would be allowed to do that here. Thank and you. Oh, go ahead, sir. Just, just for the purposes of background, uh, there was a time that a previous city council was confronted with denials for quasi-judicial matters. And they had issues where um, uh, on a Thursday night, something was denied, and then the previous, the, the subsequent Thursday, somebody would come back and a petitioner's representative would ask for reconsideration of a, a quasi-judicial matter. And ultimately, city council, a city council made the determination uh, to um, uh, amend the code and to amend the rules to say that quasi-judicial matters are not subject to reconsideration except provided by city code. And actually, in those cases, the, the remedy is to take it to circuit court in those cases. So I understand your concern. There was a time that city council did uh, uh, confront that with regard to quasi-judicial, did act upon that. But that being the case, um, there has been no action with regard to legislative matters. Just like any action on the consent docket, again, sometimes you're precluded from reconsideration, and we've had that discussion too, because once you authorize the mayor to take action and to, let's say, sign a contract, you lose jurisdiction then when it goes to the mayor and, the, and she signs the contract. So um, uh, the question now presented to you is how does council wish to proceed today? And thank you, Mr. Shelby, uh, Councilman um, Hurtag. Thank you. Can you uh, go over that first rule again? It has to be a motion by someone who disapproved dis approved of the it. The majority, right? Yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody who, somebody who was on the prevailing side. Okay, the so maker of the motion. I think it's pretty simple that there's four of us who were on that side. Is anyone willing to make the motion? I think it. I think that solves it. I mean. So if no one's willing to make the motion, which means no one's willing to vote for it, then it doesn't matter if two extra people are here or not, you're not gonna get the motion passed. If we literally won't, don't have one of the four of us willing to make the motion. So to me, that's just, that solves it right there. Just wanted to throw that out. Anyone else? Okay. Um, at, for, for Mr. Uh, uh, Pressman's case, is any, are there any responsive motions? No. Okay, there being none. And, um, and you, you, 
Appreciate your, your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pressman. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, and that was, and, it, and it, Councilman Carlson brings up some interesting points with regards to people being able to appeal. You know, maybe we have something built in on disclosure to the public on their right on, on uh, legislative matters to ask for reconsideration, something to think about, what have you. So I think that's the first one I've had in six and a half years. So that's, kind of, yes, sir. Go ahead. Shoot. Mr. Chairman, should, um, Marty, should we make a motion to, to fix that, that difference between the quasi-judicial matters and the legislative matter? If you can. Thank you. If we can address that under new business, I'll talk that over with, with Ms. Johnson, Belez, and okay, thank legal. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving onward with the agenda, and thank you for that, Council. Um, let's see here. Abby and Kayon have requested that we move item agenda 57 to the end uh, so that they can be able to appear remotely. Um, so just for the public's uh, sake, uh, item 57 will be at the end of the agenda. So there you go. Okay, uh, moving forward now, we are at item number six. If anyone is here for that. Good morning, Council. I'm Gregory, Assistant City Attorney. I have quite a few people with me here this morning. This is John Sprinkle and some of his associates from um, the Defense Logistics Agency, which is under the umbrella of the Department of Defense, should you have any questions about the project side of him. I also have Mr. Tony Rodriguez as a representative from McDill Air Force Base, and Brandon Campbells um, from the Mobility Department is here as well. So this item is a proposed franchise agreement um, that would allow the federal government to use an unimproved portion of Germer Street to connect a pipeline to move it out of an environment, environmentally sensitive area. And per section 22-4 of the code, these are in the form of an ordinance. So that's why we're here presenting it for first reading consideration today. So I'm here if you have any questions. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions or comments from council members? Okay. Um, may I have uh, anyone wish to read this ordinance? Go ahead, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Are you all um, uh, are you all doing any kind of public education or input for the neighbors that this is that this is going under or around? Um, yes. So, Mr. Sprinkle has informed me that um, according to federal regulation under NEPA, the National Environmental Protection Act, that they have complied with federal regulation about um, getting notice out. Mr. So, so the requirement is to put an ad in the newspaper and run it for public comment and then um, <coughs> and put that, uh, what the proposed action is in the library. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. And that has been completed. And that has been completed. All right. I, I have the utmost respect for the Defense Department and, and, and I understand what this is for. Um, there's going to be great concern with the neighbors. And because there's no public input, I will unfortunately vote no. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? OK. Councilman Miranda, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, item number six, file number FA23-83748, or is being presented for first reading consideration, are known as granting to the United States of America, and it's assigned on behalf of the United States Air Force a non-exclusive franchise to use of public streets alleys, highways, waterways, bridges, easements, and other public right-of-ways as more particularly described in Exhibit A of the City of Tampa for construction, maintenance, operation of petroleum products, pipeline distribution system with all necessary appurtenances and other delivery of petroleum products in the City of Tampa and prescribing the terms and conditions under which said non-exclusive right privileges and franchise may be exercised providing for severability, providing for an effective date. We have a motion by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilwoman Henderson. Uh, roll call, please. Clendenin, Henderson? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? I, just one more thing about my vote. I explain I'm voting no now because there's no evidence of public engagement on this, which is a really important thing for the neighborhoods. Um, if, we, if at second reading, um, it comes back that the neighborhoods and the neighbors um, have been informed about it and, and they're okay with it, then I'll change my vote. But for now, no. Pertec? Yes. Ms. Gogo. 
and, and me. Yeah. Yes. And Vier, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no okay. worries. Motion carried with Carlson voting no, Clendenin and Mascalco being absent. Thank you, Council. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thank Second you. reading and adoption will be held on November 2nd, 2023 at 930 a.m. Thank you so much. Okay, Public Safety Committee, uh, Councilman Miranda, excluding item number seven. If you can move the items, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. I move items uh, eight through 11. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilwoman um, Henderson. Uh, roll call, please. Or all in favor. Yeah, you're right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Councilwoman Henderson, yes, excluding I move 12 I and 13. Yes, Chair. I move item 15 and 16. Second. We have a motion by Councilwoman Henderson, seconded by Councilwoman Hurtak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Councilwoman Hurtak, please. Yes, um, I move items 17 through 23 and 25 through 28. Second. Motion by Councilwoman uh, Hurtak, seconded by Councilwoman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilman Miranda, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I'm 29 through 31. Motion by Councilman Miranda, second by? Second. Uh, Councilman Hurtak, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Councilman Carlson, sir, excluding item 57, please. I'd like to move, I'd like to move 50, uh, 32 through 56. Second. Motion by Councilman Carlson, second by Councilman Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Councilman Henderson, Transportation Committee for 58, please. Yes, I move item number 58. Second. Motion by Councilman Henderson, seconded by Councilman uh, Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, next we have committee reports, consent agenda items. Or strike that. No. Item number, wait, I'm sorry. 59, item you just 59. need to set a hearing. Yes, ma'am, if you would like to make that motion. Yeah, I'll second. make a motion to set the hearing. Um, November 16th. No, this is a petition for review. Yes, to, to be scheduled on November for file number SUB 23-16-C, review hearing to be scheduled on November 16th, 2023 at 10 a.m. Motion by Councilman Hurtak, second by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, next move to our public hearings. If, uh, your if plan. Can, Mr. Chairman, did you want to raise the issue? Yes. Uh, items number 71 and 72, if there are no comments. Oh, yes. And Thank 69. You. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so um, items number 69, 71, and 72. Uh, any questions or comments by council members on this? If not, may I have a motion? Yeah. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, on 69, this is the preliminary deal with the Cardi brothers to, um, uh, to save the Jackson House. So um, we're not supposed to comment during public comment, but Ms. Burton mentioned the Jackson House. We've been... Um, there have been a lot of things that have stopped the Jackson House from being repaired over the last 10 years. And uh, this, we sitting as a CRA put in a million dollars a couple years ago, um, but we've been waiting in part for this agreement to go through and it still has some hoops to go through, but I just wanna thank um, John and Jason Accardi and their, um, their family for, um, for working with the city to try to resolve this. Thank you. And I just, um, thank you for that, Mr. Carlson. I just also want to, Thanks city staff, um, especially um, Mr. Elise Drumgo for really working hard on this. Uh, it's a, it's not the finished, but it's it's certainly much further than we've been before. So thank you so much. Councilman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I also want to say hi to the city staff. Thanks for your work and to the Accardi brothers and the family for coming up with a workable solution so that this can go forward. It's been worked on and uh, it finally came to fruition that there was a, a way of doing it. So I want to thank all parties involved. <coughs> Anyone else, Councilman? Yes, they, I just want to say thank you as well. There is progress, and progress means that we're moving forward. So I appreciate all the work on behalf of the um, city staff as well as the Accardi family for um, their involvement in wanting to come to a resolution to get this thing going. And also to the foundation as well. The don't want to leave out the Jackson House Foundation. And, and I uh, concur with all the remarks and also wanted to highlight the great unsung heroes of humanity, our lawyers. No, I'm joking. But, <laughs> but our, our attorneys, uh, who I know have done so much work on this. But, but yeah, just for all the parties involved. I mean, um, I know a, a lot of folks are very passionate about this. I've always heard Councilman Carlson talk about, obviously, Councilwoman Henderson, very everybody on the um, Jackson House. So uh, just great. So who would? Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I'll move 69, uh, 71, and 72. We have a motion by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilwoman Henderson. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Okay, thank you very much, Council. Now we're moving forward to public hearings. Item uh, 60, if you are going to be uh, speaking or testifying here today, oh, strike that, that's non quasi judicial. Okay, so item 60, who's here for item 60? May I have a motion to open all public hearings? Second. Okay. Motion by Councilwoman uh, Hertzak, second by Councilman uh, Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, item 60. If anyone is here for that. Morris Massey, legal department. I think Ms. Gregory was the uh, assistant city attorney working on this item, but this is to. Uh, rectify an issue in our impact the ordinance to make it consistent with the requirements of state law. Um, happy to answer any questions. So. Any questions for Mr. Massey? Okay. Uh, there being none, we don't take public comment on this, do we, Mr. Shelby? Yes, yes, you do. Okay. Is anyone here from the public to speak on item number 60? If so, please come forward. Okay. There being none, may we have a motion to close? So moved. Motion by Councilman Miranda, second by Councilman Hertak. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Who would like to read this? Go ahead, sir. Um, I'd like to move file number E2023-8, uh, CH25, ordinance being presented for second reading adoption ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, relating to Chapter 25, Transportation Article 1, Administrative Provisions Amending <laughs> Section 25-74, exemptions from and credits for multimodal transportation impact fee providing for appeal of all Second. ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith, providing for severability of writing effective date. Motion by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Please record your vote. Motion carried unanimously with Lynn Bennett and <coughs> Menescalco being absent. Okay, thank you very much for that. Next we have, we're opening our quasi-judicial uh, hearings. Uh, and should I, we? It, yes, sir, go ahead. Sue Ling, should you, it, since some people, um, may be hearing impaired or something. Could, could we just state that why his is showing up as Guido? Oh, that's funny. I didn't notice that. Thank you. Yeah. How about I can, um, maybe we just do uh, voice. Um, just voice. I think voice is easier. Yeah. I'm too lazy to move, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, that, that, just just to repeat, the, the the electronic calculation showed that Guido had voted, but he wasn't here. Yeah, let's do that. If, if we can. We can. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. So this is on item number 60. Henderson? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Hertet? Yes. Clendenin and Maniscalco? Motion carried unanimously with Clendenin and Maniscalco being absent. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Councilman Carlson, for uh, recognizing that again. Um, now we're going to our public hearings for second readings. If you are here to testify or speak on any of these items that are uh, quasi-judicial public hearings, please stand if you're able to do so and be ready to be sworn in, if you don't mind, Sue. Thank you very much. Okay, we uh, move forward on item number 61. Um, yes, thank you so much, Council LaShawn Dock, Development Coordination. <laughs> item 61 is REZ 2349. This is for the property at 4502 West McCoy Street. This item is before you today for second reading. Um, revised site plans have been provided um, and have been certified um, to the clerk. I'm available if you have any questions. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Any questions from Council? Okay, thank you very much. Do we have an applicant here? Good morning, Cami Corbett with the law firm of Hill Ward and Henderson. I'm just here to answer any questions should you have any. Thank you very much, ma'am. Any questions? Okay, is there anyone here to publicly comment on item number 61? Okay, there being none, may I have a motion to close, please? So moved. Second. Motion by Councilman Miranda, second by Councilwoman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Councilwoman uh, Hertak, if you are okay with this, do you yes, mind reading item absolutely. 61? Absolutely. Uh, num item number 61, file number REZ 23 49. Um, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 4502 West McCoy Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification PD Plan Development to PD Plan Development residential, residential Multifamily providing an effective date. Motion by Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Hertak, seconded by Councilman uh, Carlson. Roll call, please. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin Henderson? Yes. Miranda? Yes. 
Carlson? Yes. Maniscalco and Vieira? Yes. Motion carried unanimously with Clendenin and Maniscalco being absent. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we move forward to item number 62, mm -hmm. which we, we only have five members. Yeah, I, I was going to say that we probably have an issue on that. So, Mr. Shelby, I don't know if the, uh, is that your, sir? Or, yeah. or the, That's what we don't do. but I think you need three votes. Uh, so if we have two uh, no votes, you have one, two, three yes votes. You need four votes to move it forward. So, yeah, but again, I'll let you all do it. Go ahead, sir. Um, Council, you, you may uh, remember that this is the uh, property that's adjacent to Interstate 4. And uh, we respectfully had requested approval for this. Uh, I, unless one of the council members that voted against it is willing to change their vote, then we have to continue the hearing. Okay. Um, Unless, um, maybe. I'm open to listening to you, what you have to say. Um, this was a property that is immediately adjacent to Interstate 4. And I'm sorry, if you could state your name, I don't think you did. Steve McElhaney. Thank you, sir. Um, it, was a, it was a townhouse project. It's a vacant lot. It has experienced a lot of homeless uh, sleeping on the lot, and this was going to clean that up and repave and restore the alley in the rear, <clears throat> as well as uh, it's an elevated property, so it's it's about three feet above the level of the street, and it directly faces Interstate 4. So, I mean, it, it is an area that is in badly in need of redevelopment, and uh, this is one of, of two projects that are going on in the area to, to start restoring some of the housing stock that's in that uh, district. Um, there were no, uh, there was uh, one woman came up and said something about that she was concerned about traffic. Um, but th this is a very small road that uh, is, it's, it's hard to access. Uh, it's only accessible for the one way traffic going north on, uh, on 22nd Street. So it's, it's a remote area and uh, quite honestly, it's, uh, it's an area that's a challenge to redevelop to begin with. So we respectfully request your approval. I mean, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have, but again, uh, I brought the file if you want me to show you the pictures. Yeah, I was about to say that I thought the pictures, the pictures told the story really yeah. well. <laughs> um, can you see that? This is Interstate 4. This is 15th Street, and this is the subject site here. It, it only faces the right-of-way uh, along Interstate 4. Mm -hmm. There's one other project going on in the area that's right here, which is also a townhouse-style project. And um, again, this is 15th Street here, and this is 22nd over there. So we had met the we had met the, con the criteria as established by the city, and it was found to be consistent um, by all of the agencies. <clears throat> the planning commission, city staff had found it consistent, and um, I can go through the other criteria if you like. But but this is a this is a very difficult area, and it is a uh, underserved by housing. The um, this is the aerial. If you can see, this is the site here. And this is Interstate 4 with the off ramps and the on ramps here. So there's no traffic going down these, these streets except for the houses that are located there. This uh, dead ends into, um, into another street, but there, like I said, there's not much out there. And you can see the retaining walls here. There's quite a there's quite a difference in elevation between the street level and here. So you <clears throat> you have to access it um, very carefully. And, and again, it's got to be have to be approved by by transportation to do that. So this is the layout which shows the access.
and the sidewalk connections with each of the units connecting back to 15th Street. Here's another aerial view showing you the location here. And again, this is one way northbound. And when I, when I first went out to that site, I, I actually drove past it and had to come around the block because it's, it's so uh, kind of remote and difficult to eat to access. If I may, we had a council member step council member step out. Councilman Carlson, did you have a question, sir? Oh, you didn't. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you did. Okay. No, I'll be happy to, to uh, you know, to answer any any questions you might have. But I guess we lost one of the council members, so I don't. Yeah, we, we have a quorum. It's just the problem is with the the the, the, uh, the question is whether it's going to be continued or whether there's going to be a vote. Yeah. So <laughs> go ahead, sir. Yeah, probably. So, um, go do you, ahead. Do you want to pause this one and go to the next hearing? Probably. We do that. Uh, Councilman, did you have a question? Or? Uh, and legal shut me down if I'm not allowed to ask this, but I, it, you can see in the map the or the pictures they they're right away by I four. Do you know in the expansion of I four will it be coming right up to that road or how? I, I don't I don't know, but but there's there, there's there's quite a bit of room. There's quite a bit of room just between the interstate and the roadway, but even so, it would be an elevated portion. You wouldn't have access there. If it's anything, it would be um, the, the the transit line. Yeah, it's also on a transit corridor on 22nd Street, so it it meets the other criteria that you all, as council, have talked about encouraging you know additional development in areas like this but it's like i said it's a, it's a pioneering effort going in there thank you sir any other questions from council members to mr michelini okay sir um so are you are you before we have public comment on your item, are you asking to move forward with the hearing or do a motion to continue or? I, I just soon go forward. I mean, if it, if, I if, it if, if I don't have four prevailing modes, it's going to be continued yeah, anyway. Yeah, it'll be Sure, sure. Uh, Council Member Rainer, go ahead, sir. There's a difference. If it, if it goes forward and fails, that's a difference. Mm -hmm. Always, the prevailing side has got to bring it up again next meeting. Yeah, but it, if I may, it passed uh, five to, or what was it? Two. Or five to two? Five yeah, to two. but then two, two of the five votes are not here today. Therefore, if everyone stayed the same, it'd be three to two. Right. Uh, but Mr. Michelini is going forward in the potential that somebody changes their vote, which could go one way or the other, by the way, of course. Um, so um, with that ahead, unless if no one else wishes to speak from council, is anyone here to publicly comment on item number 62? Okay. Being none, uh, if I may, may we have a motion? And before we close, any comments, Mr. McElhinney, before we close? No, I would just respectfully request your consideration for uh, a favorable vote on this. It's, uh, like I said, it's it's a difficult site, and the uh, the property owner is taking a big risk in going in here and developing uh, new townhouses. Thank you, sir. May I have a motion to close? So moved. Motion by Councilman Miranda, second by Council Member uh, Carlson. Did you wish to speak? Did you wish to speak? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so as to item 62, we have to read vote, by title. Vote on it. I'm sorry. Go. Um, all in favor? Oh, wait. Any opposed? <laughs> Council Member. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to uh, reiterate why I'm not voting for this. Uh, <clears throat> The rationale is that they're taking a risk when there's a new townhome being built next door. Um, there is not a risk in this community. These are going to go for at the minimum three fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. That's because that's what's going. That's the the um, prevailing market in that area right now. And so this this uh, the fact that saying it's a risk is not true. My my issue with it is when you looked at the the block, 
everything's facing the street and this in, invites things that are not facing the street. It doesn't have, um, it's just the alley of a, of a driveway and it can, you can put density there that's more welcoming and, and so that's why I voted no first of the time and it's why I'm gonna vote no again. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, um, anyone else speaking? Yeah, yes, same here. Um, you know, it's a residential area that is, I, I, I actually drive the street quite a bit. It's not struggling per se. Um, it's filled with single family homes. This development for me is just an overreach. Um, you know, if it was less, I believe, I think the developers just being a little bit too greedy with um, the number of units that they're trying to build. Um, it is all single family home, long term residents, and I don't want to break a consistent pattern. Um, if other lots become available and then someone comes to push the envelope again. Um, I agree with the, um, the concerns of the homeowner that spoke um, on last occasion. So that's the, also the reason why I'm, I can't support it. Okay, so uh, Councilman Miranda, if you don't mind, sir, go ahead and uh, reading it. We'll, read it. I, we'll, I think we're just, we wasted that time. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm we saying knew is- We what was gonna happen, we continue. We, we're yeah, I, I, I agree. Now. I agree, but I'm saying just for formality's sake so we can have three votes, unless Mr. Shelby, is there a different way? Why not just a motion to continue? Okay, mm -hmm. how about that? Let's yeah. do that. Let's do um, a motion to continue. Would everyone like to do I'll that? I'll make a motion to continue to the next meeting. Okay, we have a motion. And time and place. November 2nd. Okay. No, no, that's gonna be November 2nd? What about two weeks? The what's, two weeks? I'm sorry, October 9th, I'm ahead of myself. Okay. October 19, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. in City Council Chambers, Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard, third floor. Thank you. We have a motion by Councilman Miranda. Do we have a second? second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank okay. you, Council. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving forward then to item number 63. Is anyone here for that one? Um, yes, thank you, Council. Item 63 is REZ 2343. This is for the property at Folio 169180.0005. This is the property at Armenia in North B in that vicinity. Um, this is a rezoning request um, from PD to PD plan development for residential single family semi-detached use on site. Um, minor modifications were required to be made to the site plan between first and second reading. Those changes have been made. The plan has been certified and provided to the clerk. I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you, as always. Uh, any questions from council? Okay, applicant. Um, Steve Michelini, I'm here representing the petitioner. Uh, this was uh, found to be um, inconsistent, but it was a, there were some waivers that, that were involved. And if you might recall, the council was happy about the orientation and um, how this was actually laid out and it meets the West Tampa overlay district and that's what caused us to ask for the waiver uh, on the buffer waiver and then there was also a letter from the adjacent property owner having no objection to that waiver thank you sir I'd be any happy to answer any more questions you might have and if you'd like me to show you the site plan I, I can do that as well thank you sir any questions from council members before we go to public comment Okay, being none, is anyone here from the public here to comment on item 63? Okay, unless if Mr. Michelini wishes to speak more, may I have a motion to close? Second. Motion from Councilman Miranda, second by Councilwoman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I think I was on Councilwoman Hertak. Do you mind reading this one? I did last Okay, my yeah. apologies. You're sure, right. No Councilwoman problem. Henderson. Go yes, ahead. thank you, Chair. I move file number REZ 23 43, an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of folio number 169180-0005 in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification PD, put plan development to PD plan development residential single family semi-detached, providing an effective date. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilwoman Henderson. I'm, go ahead. Do we... Um, Move the re resolution as we substitute after, it after. Okay. After. All right. Uh, <laughs> seconded by Councilman uh, Miranda. Roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Maniscalco, Clendenin, Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Henderson? Yes. And Vieira? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Mm -hmm. I move the resolution. Substitute resolution. Maniscalco being absent. Second on substitute resolution. Thank you. We have a motion by Councilman Henderson, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Uh, roll call, please. If 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Council. Thank, thank you, you sir. Uh, item 64. Um, thank you again, Council LaShawn, Doc Development Coordination. Item 64 is for the properties located at 2015 and 2017 Maple Avenue, 1305 South 22nd Street, and 2020 Oakwood Avenue. The request is to rezone the property from PD Plan Development to PD Plan Development for residential multifamily and storefront residential office uses. Um, minor modifications were required to be made to the site plan, and those changes have been made. The site plan has been certified and provided to the clerk. And I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions from council? Okay, do we have an applicant here? Good afternoon, Council. Alex Shaler, 400 North Ashley Drive. As LaShawn mentioned, we made the revisions to the site plan, and we also worked with Ms. Mayor between readings to address all of her concerns with the original landscape plan, which she has since approved. So happy to answer any questions, and we respectfully request your approval. Thank you very much. Any questions from Council? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, is anyone here from the public here to comment on item number 64? If so, please come forward. Okay, unless if there's any objection from the petitioner, may have a motion to close. So moved. Okay. Motion from Councilman Henderson, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, Councilman Miranda, do you, sir, mind taking item 64? Number number 64, from number REZ 23-60. An order is being presented for second reading, reading adoption. An order is rezoning property in General City of 2015 and 2017 Maple Avenue. 1305 South 22nd Street and 2020 Oakwood Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification, PD Plan Development, to PD Plan Development Residential Multifamily, and Storefront Residential Uses, providing an effective date. Motion by Councilman Miranda. Do we have a second? Second by Councilman Carlson. Roll call, please. Miranda? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Pertet? Yes. And Denon Henderson? Yes. Maniscalco and Vieira? Yes. Move the resolution. Carry uni unanimously with Clendenin and Maniscalco being second. Absent. Thank you, ma'am. We have a motion to move the resolution by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, thank you, Council. Uh, next, we have item 65. Uh, anyone here for item, I guess, staff 65? Yes, thank you, Council. LaShawn, Doc, Development Coordination. Item 65 is REZ 2361. This is for the property located at 2511 North Albany Avenue. The request is to rezone from RS50 residential single family to PD plan development for residential single family attached uses on site. Um, the um, site plan required modifications to be made. Those modifications have been made. The plan has been certified and provided to the clerk. I'm available if you have any questions. Any questions from council? And uh, there being none, do we have the petitioner here? A representative? It appears not. Um, any questions from council before we go to public comment? Okay, is anyone here from the public here to comment on item number 65? Okay, there being none, unless if there's any council discussions or questions from, or comments from staff, may I have a motion to close? So move. Mm -hmm. Motion from Councilman Miranda close, second by Councilman Carlson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Councilman Carlson, do you mind taking this one, sir? Um, I'd like to move file number REZ 2361, ordinance being presented for second reading adoption ordinance, rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2511 North Albany Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS. 50 residential single family to PD plan development residential single family attached providing effective date. Motion from Councilman Second. Carlson, second by Councilman Miranda. Roll call, please. Carlson? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Clendenin Henderson? Yes. Maniscalco and Vieira? Yes. Motion carried unanimously with Clendenin and Maniscalco being absent. Okay, thank you, Council. Thank you, uh, we, uh, and thank you. Thank you. We have item 66 here, which I don't know if that's going to uh, take a while. 66? Yes. That's what I was going to say. Yep. That I was just going to um, see what council thought about just moving ahead. What time would y'all like to go to lunch? 12 15? 12 30. 12 30. We got to try to finish this thing, don't we? I, I don't disagree. Okay, item 67. Um, yeah, I was going to say, council, I'm representing uh, weekly homes on 66. Mm hmm. 
and I think that's probably going to cut into your time. It's going to take a while. To okay, that. so we'll move to 67. We'll probably do it. Um, we'll, we'll consider it once we go forward. And thank you, sir. Is anyone here on item 67? Um, Dana Crosby Collier from the City Attorney's Office and Evan Johnson from um, Planning. We're here to present to you the ordinance on second reading. It's the ordinance creating the Tampa Heights Overlay District. A substitute ordinance was submitted in your packet simply to update the footnote because we just did the same thing for um, East Tampa. So if you have any questions, we're available uh, to respond. Any questions from Council? Oh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you so much to staff and to the community again for all your hard work on this. Uh, folks are very excited about this overlay, and I've already heard from other neighborhoods that want to take a look at possibly doing something in their area. So just thank you, everyone, again for all of their hard work on yeah, this. Yeah, they did a great job. That was a real community effort. Anyone else? Yes, same thing. Same here. I just um, interviewed this morning with um, one of the news stations about it. Um, all the work, hard work from the Tampa Heights Community Civic Association is well-deserved. Congratulations um, for this unanimous previous first reading and hopefully on the second. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else here to comment from staff or applicant? Okay, there being none, is there any public comment for item 67? Okay, unless if there's any objection, may I have a motion to close sure. the hearing? Second. Motion from Councilman Miranda, second from Councilwoman Henderson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And may we have our Tampa Heights resident, uh, Councilwoman Henderson. I know what your Seminole Heights. Okay, I, I know your Seminole Heights, your Tampa Heights. Go I was ahead. gonna ask, but you know, I, this is what makes the job is. fun. Thank you so much, um, Chair. Appreciate it. I move file number E2023 uh, 8, Chapter 27, an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, relating to Tampa Heights Overlay District, making revisions to City of Tampa Code of Ordinances, Chapter 27, Zoning and Land Development, amending Section 27-156, official schedule of district regulations, creating Section 27-244, Tampa Heights Overlay District Development Standards, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith, providing for severability, providing an effective Second. date. We have a motion from Councilman Henderson, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Roll call, please. Hurtet? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Henderson? Absolutely. Miranda? Yes. Maniscalco and Vieira? Yes. Motion carried unanimously with Clint Denon and Maniscalco being absent. Move the substitute resolution. Uh, we have a motion. Oh. Substitute ordinance. Oh. ordinance. Okay. No, yeah. we already did that. We did. Yep. So you don't have to do that part. Just, go ahead, sir. Okay. I want to just mention a scheduling thing. Um, 75 through 79 are motions I made, and Ms. Zellman is ready to go on those. Mm -hmm. But if if you all think that if it looks like we're going to finish before lunch, um, we're okay moving them to November 16th. So I don't know how much else we have. I know we have at least one land use, but yeah. if we if we get close, we can move those. If you all want to just break and not come back. It's my birthday, so you know I'm down. <laughs> if you want, I mean, if, if you want to come back, I think that the um, that the um, that the item that we're going to have is going to go a little bit of time, 30, 40, so I don't think we're going to finish before lunch, um, maybe shortly thereafter. But again, if you wanted to um, have these items heard before, we can go forward. Were you going to say something? Go uh, ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, why don't we just break now? How about let's... <laughs> and come back at 1, and then that way we're just moving it. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, so unless if there's any objection from council, any objection... Uh, we're going to break now and come back promptly at 1. And when we come back at 1, um, we'll begin with the uh, petition for review. Thank you. I guess.